Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brothers and sisters? How is everyone doing? Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Where is that brother? One guy here was saying something funny. Where is he? Let me try to find him. Yes, that's what you say. <laughs> okay. I'll let you go this time. And next time you're not going to run away with these comments, yeah? Alaikum <laughs> salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's everyone doing? Yeah, it's not returning the favor, but I did, I've not done him any favors anyways, but Brother Sabur is going to come on, inshallah. He said he's got something, uh, some emergency he needs to deal with. Around 30 minutes or something like that, he said he's going to be home and then he's going to join, inshallah. So we will start without him because he's got some uh, something he needs to do. So do we have ATS waiting or no? Okay, let me actually, let me put the link. Obviously, it's, it should be clear that this is today is for uh, for atheists, for non-Muslims, yeah? It's not for Muslims. <laughs> I don't want Muslims jumping on. I don't want to ban people, yeah? So please don't, don't join unless you are a non-Muslim. But how are you? Uh, how's everyone? Alhamdulillah, good. Hope to see you again in Nottingham. Inshallah. Inshallah. If we are alive. Okay, I think it's already slow mode uh, and subscribers only, but let me check. Uh, yes, yeah, already slow mode and subscribers only, so you are late for the party this time, sister. <laughs> uh, traveling. Okay. Okay, let's put the link and see if we've got some atheists already ready to join while Brother Sabur is able to come and join us, inshallah. Okay, so all of those atheists who be believe in evolution, you got the link in the description. You can uh, join, inshallah, and tell us why you believe in evolution. <clears throat> Link is only for atheists, please. There's no camera for whoever just joined. You have to turn your camera on. Okay, where are all the atheists? You know, we got those atheists in the comments after the, the what you call it, after the presentation, stuff like that. But I, I don't know. Let's see whom, whom we're going to get, inshallah. Should have some. Okay, uh, a lot of people joining, but their devices are not connected. Uh, or people are joining. I hope they are actually atheists. Okay, Sakuno, I don't. I need to see you. Uh, I don't see you. I don't know what, what, what do you have there. Okay, Wesley. That seems interesting. Okay, <laughs> you are a non-Muslim Wesley, yeah. I can't hear you, by the way. Just give me a thumbs up if you are not a Muslim. Okay. I'm probably going to start with you. <laughs> You're going to be the star of this party. Inshallah. Okay. You can you can type in the private chat if you're saying something. Because I can't hear you. You are in the backstage, by the way. Any other atheists are also welcome to join. Uh, one by one, inshallah. Sorry, I am Muslim. Don't be sorry, man. There's nothing to be sorry for. Something to be proud for. <laughs> sorry, no, Sankhya Kumar. I don't know what that name is, but you've got to have a camera. Sorry. That is not going to work. Okay, Wesley, I'm going to bring you on, yeah? Okay? One second. Okay, you want to do something? So do it. Or just type in the private chat what you want to say. 
the link is only for atheists please yes brother sabur will be here in a bit if you're just joining he's going to join us soon inshallah uh yeah if you want okay turn it off now turn it off now i'll, I'll add you yeah yeah how are you wesley you want to hi have... hello can you hear me the camera on no worry you don't need to... <laughs> i thought about turning my camera on but i have no, i have why not why not well it, it depends on it depends on how much i want to get involved with youtube or not i'm still not okay. decided on that i think that um i'm trying to figure out so I am doing well. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. You mean get involved? Do you mean make a, a channel or something like that? Is that what you mean by getting involved or? Right. Else? And I don't really want to be, I don't really want to be like, it's hard to explain, but like, I don't really want to be like a personality sort okay. of like figure. Like I know like a lot of people, like they, when they create a channel, like they, they do it like for like a sort of like personality kind of, um, and like for me i think that it's more important to just like focus on the sort of like i guess rather boring maybe a bit like dry intellectual aspects of it and i haven't really decided if i want to like you know um how i want to go about navigating that so okay so what do you have what is your worldview what do you have to to present to the people because there has to be some sort of a niche or content that you would be presenting isn't it well, yeah, what I'm sort of like interested like within like the context of like religions and even like science and stuff like that is I'm just sort of like curious about like how it is that like um, kind of like how information travels in a way and like yeah. and um, why it is that like people believe certain things in like different parts of the world like and how it is that like, you know, religions or even like methods and just like ideas and information in general is spread and like how people are like convinced by like narratives and like just beliefs in general i find all that stuff fascinating and i'm i'm kind of just like interested in asking questions and like trying to like figure out like why it is that like you know somebody in some, some part of the world like might find islam to be convincingly true and something some parts of like what their understanding of islam is is like something that they consider something that they need to act on or you know live their life towards and just as well like you know why is it that there's like this sort of like, you know, difference of how people behave in like one area of the world versus like another area of the world that seems to me to be all relevant to like the, the level of information that they have access to and all the sort of like biases that exist that are like more than just necessarily like, you know, how like a book travels or um, what people say, but like more, but like also just like a matter of like, you know, things like cognitive biases, like um, things that, like, I know that you bring up the concept of like fitra, which to me, it seems like a very, and you also bring up the like Oxford study, I think about about how like, there seems to be like a strong cognitive predisposition to think that there is like a higher power of some sort. And I think that that stuff is like, just very fascinating to me to like, figure out like, you know, because if that is the case that people have like a general, I don't think that it, the study concludes that like everybody is going to like believe in a higher power like intuitively but i think that if that's the case that like say maybe 90 plus percent of people are intuitively going to be theistic or deistic or whatever no it's um, not the studies it's not about the future you you're, you're talking about the future study is not predicting someone's future the study is stating their their current state of affairs right so they are saying currently those children have a, a an innate disposition to the divine or to a higher power or something beyond right so that, okay. that is what the study is concluded it's not really saying in the future they will believe in god or they will not believe in god right because you can be born and that is the islamic concept is that you can be born with that disposition to believe mm -hmm. in a creator the fitra but the fitra gets clouded and that's what the, what the narration of the prophet says well that's is what it, muslims yes that's what muslims say and believe some muslims, yeah, but, i should say <laughs> Yeah, but fitra is no, no, no. It's not some Muslims. It's, it's the narration that mentions the fitra of the prophet. So it's not about Muslims now. It's the prophet himself, right? He is saying that it gets clouded by the the parents. They change the disposition. That they make you Christian. They make you Jewish. They make you Hindu, etc. Right? But the fitra is an Islamic concept, anyways. If you use right. it because so we have to run from an Islamic paradigm, right? So if mm -hmm. we're accepting an Islamic concept, then we would accept what Islam says about that concept, which is also the idea that the fitra. It is it can be clouded and it will be clouded and it is clouded as we can see today by those people who come and claim 
that there is no creator, this or that. It's, it's a clear evidence that this is clouded. Uh, even though I think I believe deep within that they already know. But point is today's stream is a bit because I don't know uh, you're coming with a, with maybe a different worldview. Let me just explain one thing and then we see where we go from there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me just see where we go from there. Right. So today's topic is is focused on because Brother Sabur is not here le yet, so I'm gonna leave leave it a bit relaxed. Yeah. But generally, the the topic of today is evolution. Right. right? And the topic of today is not Muslims being questioned on the fitrah of the religion, right? Right. <laughs> the topic of yeah, yeah, because this is it's a completely different thing now. But the topic of today is the atheists who believe evolution is a fact. We are well, challenging them on their yeah. Go ahead. See, this is the problem. Like right off the bat, is that I don't know. Like if any atheist would argue that evolution is a fact, that would just be wrong because evolution is a theory. It's not a fact. Okay. It's a theory. It's like okay. a theory. A theory, as I understand it, is based on like many different observations and understandings, which are based on facts. Like a fact can just be like a sentence, like I have brown hair, you're wearing a hat. Like those are just some boring factual statements. And my understanding is that with evolution, scientists make observations, like they look at things like related to like, you know, fossil records and, um, you know, genetic variation, like phenotypic traits and stuff like that, that they see. And then from those observations, from those factual um, observations they make, they then create a framework and that's what's called evolution. So I don't think that, you know, like focusing on evolution is fact. I think that anyone who says that evolution is a fact would be wrong. And that's not what science, my understanding is anyways, is because like science is fundamentally a work in progress. Like just cause you have like one theory even if like you have an overwhelming amount of evidence to suggest that there's some like utility or truth, whatever you want to say behind certain aspects of the theory, it doesn't make it like infallible or like perfect per se. There's always like maybe, I mean, unless there is not like, but generally there's like an assumed possibility that like my new evidence might come in and then it could like, you know, counter some sort of like framework that scientists have made. And so um, that's how I understand it. Well, uh, you're going to be here. I don't know if you're going to be here for the rest of the live stream. But if you are, <laughs> you will see. You will see if you watch, if you continue to watch and you, you're not there. You see other people making that claim that, yes, evolution is an absolute fact. That this, you will get people making that claim. And I did mm -hmm. come across many atheists making that claim. Maybe you're that coming from a more. Yeah, you're, you're coming from a more from an, an understanding position to the problem of induction, understanding to the presuppositions of what science is and how how it's based on empirical reality and how empirical reality therefore is limited and it cannot lead to absolute truth, etc. You're moving from that position, which is a rational position to hold, right? Our problem mm -hmm. is, our main problem, look, if someone comes and says, I don't know if evolution is true or not, okay, there's evidence, we don't know. Maybe it is true, maybe it is not true, maybe it is a fact, maybe it's not a fact. Uh, we've got some data today and this is what, uh, we've got certain conclusions from this data, therefore. Yeah, if someone mm -hmm. comes like that and he speaks to Muslim, I don't think any Muslims have issues with that, right? Mm -hmm. Muslims have issues with those who come and they claim, this is a fact, this is a reality. Look, you're, in fact, they go to the extent here, your religion is wrong because it's not in line with the, with the theory of evolution, right? Which mm -hmm. then becomes completely stupid because it is based on a scientific method, scientific method is limited, etc. But they, these people exist. You want to say something, yeah? Well, I guess I'm, I thought about asking a question, but maybe it's just like the wrong question. Cause like, I sort of wonder like, if, if like, like, again, like, I'm sure that you're well aware that there are Muslims that don't view like a conflict between like Islam and evolution, right? Like, I'm sure that you're, yeah, of you've course. heard of, I mentioned that yeah. before. But like, I don't understand why it is that like some countries that have like, um, majority Muslim populations, like Turkey, like, go so far as to like consider banning um, evolution from the curricula. Like, I don't understand, like if, if there was no conflict. I need to verify the information. So uh, I'm, uh, first I would say that Turkey is not that close to Islamic teachings and it's close anyways. <laughs> that's, that's, I know what you mean, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing I would say. And anyone who goes to Turkey would know that, right? So I don't know if that's based on an Islamic uh, position, but I would agree with this. But I even would completely in... agree with this. I would completely agree with with not teaching evolution in schools i'm look i'm of the position that look the evolution is a, is a is a pile of rubbish for me me personally <laughs> my, my position you know so it belongs in the bin so i i don't i would not waste the time of my uh, children and, and relatives and people that i know or muslims in general to learn about something which is a hocus pocus right basically so i would agree with that position right but what i'm stating is there are muslims who try look there is there is me and there is islam right 
uh, there mm-hmm. is me and there is Islam. I can hold a specific position that is not necessarily uh, what Islam ask is asking you to do. Right? Mm-hmm. It's not against Islam, but it's not something that Islam is asking you to do. So, for example, uh, someone can say there's nothing in the Quran or in the prophetic teachings that mm-hmm. goes against specifically the animals evolved, right? Okay. And when you talk about evolution, you talk about directed evolution, that God is directing the process and all of that. I'm sure you already know about that. So, okay, yeah. yeah, you've got those people who will say this. There are things that you have to reject as a must. Like, for example, that humans, they are a, a, spe- a special creation of God. I'm sure you know about that. Or like, well. Right, like, because like a lot of people who... Exceptionalism, human exception. They apply evolution and conclude that because of the, what we understand about evolution, there had to have been like common ancestors and that they, like, it kind of like, like, I, I agree with that interpretation. Like, I see like conflicts there with like the creationist story within like the context of humans. Um, so I, I, I do think honestly that there are parts of um, evolution and like um, Islam and Christianity and Judaism that are incompatible within like, just based on not even so much just the text itself, but even just like based on the historical record of how people um, seem to understand what the text itself meant. Like, it, like I don't see, like, I know a lot of Muslims don't, it, it's interesting to me because, like, I just don't see any historical record of Muslims, like, making conclusions that are, like, really the similar conclusions about life that, like, maybe Richard, um, not Richard Dawkins, Charles Darwin, um, okay. or other um, scientists made. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'd be like curious to know if there were any um, Muslim scientists who were also like making similar observations about Absolutely like. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, and Charles Darwin did not really have uh, anything different from the Muslims at his time. It's not mm. like he discovered something that they did not know, right? So it, what he was using it was, was general known information, right? So right. other people could have come to that conclusion before him, right? His time. Mm-hmm. There are Muslims, right? But no, Muslims did not come to these conclusions because Muslims have a clear cut vision of how humans were created, etc. And animals are they, are, they are creation of God. And they are perfect from the sense that they are perfect for the function that they are needed for. Because mm-hmm. the word perfect has to be put in, in uh, into... It sounds kind of, very, what's the word, yeah, teleological, because people, it's purpose yeah, focused. Exactly, like, because people misunderstand this word. Purpose is what God wants of that entity or that being. Okay. Right? So Allah says in the Quran, Ladi ahsana kulla shay'in khalaqa. The one who perfected everything he created. Perfected it in the way that he wanted, the, perfect, the way that he desired, the, the way that he wanted it to be. Okay? Okay. So so also the human being is from uh, for us is the same story. Allah has created us in the way that he wanted us to be and we are in the way exact way that Allah wanted us to. Be. Okay? Okay. So uh this would be the, the the kind of the Islamic position you've got you you will have to go against this idea that humans evolved humans specifically. Right? Mm. You can you cannot relate that with the text because the text clearly opposes that. It has clear cut mentioning of cre- the creation of adam and eve directly by, by god etc and all of that so these things you cannot really play games with there are people who play games and they make everything metaphorical you well, know yeah everything is a metaphor <laughs> all right. of a sudden and then you cannot have religion really because you're just playing games with everything well i mean i guess you could have a religion if enough people interpret it in the same metaphorical way that everyone else did but that's just really that's all i mean it's hard to get everybody no, no, to you do can't. anything regardless <laughs> No, no, no. The, re- the reason you can't is because if, if I can, every, if can anything can be a metaphor, if anything can be a metaphor, I cannot have principles that I rely on. So mm. when you say to me, worship God, I'll say to you, that's a metaphor. When you say to me, pray five times a day, I'll say, pray here is a metaphor for something else. When you say to me, say this, I'll say, you know, actually, th- th- this is a metaphor. They don't actually want you to say this. So when mm-hmm. I start making everything a metaphor, you cannot have anything because anyone can interpret the way they like. And that's why you look at certain religions like Christianity, where you will get every Christian has his own point of view of, of the Bible. Everyone believes his own things because there is no limitation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, there are commonalities like Jesus died and all of the stuff. But generally, right. well, yeah, when you go into the details of what the Trinity is and what is Jesus for you, and you start seeing all of these, when you start peeling the layers, right? You start to see the problems with this idea of lit, uh, metaphorical and literal, right? In mm. Islam, it's it's quite clear. Uh, the, we take everything to be literal unless mm. there is a reason in the context, right? 
that takes us to a metaphorical uh, meaning. So the meaning is always literal, unless there is there is evidence <laughs> in the context or evidence that is clear that takes us from the 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 literal here to metaphorical. So mm. if I've got a hundred verses that are clear, and one verse that can mean two things, <clears throat> and the literal meaning of it opposes the hundred verses, then most likely this verse is not does not mean literally what it's saying because it's opposing a hundred clear verses. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Right. So we can use that as a principle. So generally that's a principle given also uh, given to us in the Quran in chapter three. So we, we take things to be literal. So from that perspective, you've got the creation of Adam and Eve and you've got that Allah created those animals and this and that. And, and evolution today has become a religion anyways. Well, we're, we're back to evolution. I know some of your viewers were kind of upset we weren't talking about evolution um i, I am kind of curious how sabor like if you do away with evolution like how do you explain like genetic diversity like in terms of like um whether it just be simple something as simple as like someone's skin complexion or whether it be like certain predispositions to certain sort of like um uh how do i explain it like certain conditions i don't want to say um like like for for instance like like, how do you explain, like, how some people can, like, consume milk to, like, pass, well past a certain age? Or how is it that some people, you know, are predisposed, predisposed to certain sort of, like, conditions like sickle cell anemia? Like, without sort of, like, applying evolution to humans, like, how do you, I guess you're not maybe necessarily the one to ask, but I'm just, like, curious, how would you, like, try to, like, describe how those, because, like, if, if everybody was, like, created in, like, the image of Adam and Eve or, like, whatever, then, like... That's, how yeah okay. how can like because humans... the, the image there is a different thing i don't know what you mean by the image there it's more of a christian concept it depends on what you mean by the image there um well like if if they were created i guess most muslims would argue that like um humans were made like the same way that like they look like today that they weren't like something that like you know they they didn't evolve from like simpler life forms or something like that yeah yeah of course yeah of course yeah that's what we'd say, hundred percent. But point is, look, this is the point I want to make now. Let's let's kind of peel some layers here, right? Mm -hmm. First is what is your position on evolution? That's what you need to start with. Well, I just think that it's a useful a useful theory that I think provides helpful and useful explanation to figure out, like you know, to help like explain like why it is that we see so much diversity, and I think that it has a lot of applications in regards to us understanding you know, medical conditions or just like why it is that some people like might perceive or act in very different ways than what maybe that we might assume that they would based on our own understanding. Like it just seems to me that without evolution, again, you're left you're left in the dark, not really having any idea of like why it is that some people have like why there is so much like diversity within like not just other other animal species, but also within like the context of humans. Like um, it just seems to me that it's hard to have any sort of, you know, anything to work with if you're not, if you don't have evolution. Um, so you are an intermis, uh, inter, uh, in, uh, you're using it as an instrument, right? You're looking at science as an instrument. This is what you're saying. You're saying it, it is, it is just a, a theory out there. It's given us explanations for for things. It is uh, working i'm working model when it comes to certain things in life but you don't have really a strong position regarding it but the question is are you a naturalist um i would say so um in terms of like i think that um naturalistic observations like are the best i guess you could say like to simplify the best explanations to no, but the best you know naturalism they, they are the only explanations i'm not saying they are the best explanations i'm saying that they are the only explanations are you a naturalist from that position that you that there has to be an, a naturalistic explanation for the things that happen? I'm not convinced that there is anything above nature, I guess you could say, to put it another way. I don't think that I don't believe in the metaphysical. So, yeah. So you are saying everything is happening through natural causes. Right. Yeah, pretty much. So, I'd, I'd and that would sense. answer your question. The reason you're trying to look for explanations is because you're assuming that everything has to be explained through natural naturalistic processes. That you already started with this false assumption. And that false assumption, is, which you cannot prove, is that, that everything is influenced only by natural causes. Well, but, but we all make assumptions. We ha in order to have a framework, whether it be Islam or... No, I was just answering, I was answering what you were saying, because you're asking a question, how do you explain X, Y, and Z, right? 
I'm, I'm telling you the answer to your question is the following, is that not everything has to be explained through, through naturalistic processes anyways. Not everything has to be explained through naturalistic processes. And to assume that they have to be explained through naturalistic processes is something that you need to justify. So you need to give me reasons why, uh, first, you have to prove there's nothing supernatural that can influence anything in the natural for you to say that it's impossible. Everything has to be a, nat a naturalistic process. Right. And that can answer a lot of questions that people that can view certain things happening in the cosmos, in the universe that right now, or let's say today, we're not finding explanations for. Right. And then you get you get those people who will claim that there is God of the gaps. But to use the term God of the gaps does not really answer whether there could be an, a naturalistic explanation, uh, a supernaturalistic explanation or not. You get what I'm trying to say? So just to use that term does not remove the possibility that this is this could be the case. Right. Now, the mm. point is this. Right. What is evolution to you? What is the definition of evolution? Um, I would say it's more of a, a theory or a framework based on observations. Um, in a sort of can you like, go into when someone says evolution? Are you are you talking about like the observable evolution, which no one probably, you no know, Muslims would not have an issue with uh, something adapting to its environment? We don't have any issues with that. Something that you can demonstrate to me that X adapted to its environment. I don't have a problem with that. It's happening in front of me, in front of my eyes. I can see it through the empirical reality. I don't have issues with that, right? Now, are you talking about this observable kind of evolution? Or because we're here, we're talking about the evolution that the people are using, that the that, uh, developing the theory of Darwin, etc., new Darwinism, or otherwise, or whatever you want to believe, right? Because every time we use something, someone says, I don't believe that, okay? So I, I try to ask those Darwinists, which kind of evolution do you believe in so do you believe do you believe mm. that humans uh, uh and animals evolved from this magic custard right that, that, that turned into a fish and then started walking etc etc then one origin and then we've got all of these species that we have today and that happened through a, a long period of time gradualism and homology is one of the what do you believe you have to give me some some explanations into what, what evolution is well, I don't know if I would say a fish, like a, a tuna fish or an anchovy or something like that. But I think that, yeah, I think almost there's, I think that the evidence is reasonable that humans probably evolved from simpler life forms, so to speak, or, or like the over time. And this maybe it's hard to say, but like, I tend to agree with like the scientific consensus because like, of course, with evolution, there's always like the possibility that organisms can lose like complexity over time, like just because, um, and that that might be very well a part of the human timeline as well. But as far as I understand, for like the case of humans generally, I think that it's reasonable to say that humans evolved from simpler organisms. Like, <laughs> okay, so you are talking just about humans or animals as well. Um, animals as well. I mean, but then this is like. Uh, the, the, it, it, this like really stretches like what do you mean by simple like um because like i know that organisms can like evolve like they can lose traits right like organisms can like gradually over time or i should say that the environment can basically select for organisms losing like you know um wings or something like maybe organisms that had the, a certain type of wing basically couldn't produce offspring enough and got like you know eaten by a bunch of birds or something like that or some of the organisms so over time you know that part of the evolutionary tree so to speak died off so eventually like you know those characteristics like um were lost how would you time. know when you how would you know when that took when that took billions of years you were not there to see it right so like the best evidence that i think that there is, is but probably... but just before that sorry just before you answer this point you claimed something that, that was very funny for me you claimed that there's something called scientific consensus uh where, I... where is the scientific consensus on and on what on what, on what th specific thing what is the claim you're making of a consensus uh i'm trying to think like with what oh the uh, the scientific consensus of um humans evolving from simpler organisms well i had to be like really careful and not say like are you saying all simpler... scientists agree on this N not all certainly not all will ever agree on anything well probably not but <laughs> do you know there, there was there was a paper published it's called um a scientific descent of evolution i haven't right? I, it... seen that have you heard about that? This no. is 1,000 scientists, PhD holders, saying that they do not agree that random mutation can, uh, can account 
of the 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 life that we have today. They don't agree with the, with the with the. They say we have to move now from Darwinism or Darwinian evolution or, or neo Darwinism or whatever you want to call it has to be questioned. Because when mm -hmm. we look at the evidence, these are, are 1,000 scientists, right? This is a piece of paper. You can Google mm -hmm. it. You can read it, right? They all signed this, this form saying that they have this general disagreement with this idea. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is just an example. Now, But when you claim that they have consensus, you cannot generalize it and make it like an umbrella, right? Do they agree that random mutations happen? Do they agree that homology is evidence of evolution? When you start going into the details of what you call evolution is, you start seeing all of these different beliefs of all of these different scientists, of all of these different di disagreements on every single detail of evolution. So to come and claim there's a consensus and try to make it a general umbrella that, okay, yeah, humans evolve, that doesn't work. The, the processes in which they would say it evolved, every single aspect of it, you'll find disagreements amongst those people, quote unquote, that you're calling scientists. That's number one. Number two, ignoring the people that I'm telling you about, which, which the people brush away by calling creationists, just because you believe in creation, that does not negate the fact that you studied science and you are a scientist. You know, right. that you actually went and you got a PhD and you studied and you, and you got a conclusion. So this is uh, this stupid idea that uh, certain people who believe in evolution try to propagate. Okay, not that it's just creationists. I don't care. You bring them a paper of someone who who don't believe, who doesn't believe in evolution. To them, is by default that person is neglected and pushed away. And mm -hmm. I mentioned before in my presentation, the documentary of uh, called "The Expelled," which is present and uh, available on YouTube, showing you real life examples of people, PhD holders, professors, etc., excommunicated because they're they're questioning this idea of Darwinism. Mm. Or neo Darwinism or Darwin evolution, etc. Right, whatever term you want to use. Okay, mm -hmm. so so they are excommunicated from their work. They're excommunicated from the whole academic field. Okay, let alone just their own work and being fired. They're not even allowed to get a job again. So to come and claim there is a general consensus. That's what they they convince the layman. They convince the layman that there is a consensus amongst the scientists that X, Y, and Z happen. But when we start going into the details, it's not as 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 you're saying. But somebody just posted, I don't know where their source is, uh, that they, they say that nearly all or around 97% of the scientific community accepts evolution as the dominant scientific theory. Who's of saying? Biological... Who's saying? Who's, who's saying? Who's saying? I, you'd have to, you'd have to. Are you just Google this. it? <laughs> I can't. Google Come on, man. Wesley, you got, you got to do better than this, right? Well, like, I can't. I you can't, you can't just Google information. I can Google certain information now about the Quran is completely ridiculous, right? Well, I'm curious Look, of what their source is and like, what's What source is? I give you an there? example. Or I give you an example of a, a published uh, paper that is called Scientific Descent of, of Evolution. Just Google it right now from Darwinism or from evolution. Just Google it. It will it'll pop up and give you 1,000 names of 1000 cents i'll give you an example of the documentary called the expelled right this is available on youtube by the way go on my channel i've done a live stream sorry i've done a presentation on evolution and you will see in the end of that uh, presentation i put i play the part of that video you'll find it. it's just called the expelled if you google the expelled on youtube it will pop up right so these are realities now we're just not talking about maybe this is the case no they this is our actual published papers well like if we think about like a scientific consensus like if we think about like climate change if i'm not mistaken the majority of scientists like will say that um humans have contributed to like the effects of climate um change basically like which is that's pretty much a boring statement to say but that doesn't mean that they all like agree that necessarily what is like you know the most what, what has contributed no but most... climate climate change it cannot be this is this is a disanalogy because climate change and evolution is a completely different thing. This is one thing that has so many subfields, so many information that within right. it that are disagreed upon. Climate change is just one idea. Do you understand? Like, climate mm -hmm. is changing. No, this is just a basic idea. Well, that I mean, based on, specifically yeah. with regards to human human activity like, advancing, like the acceleration of you know, um, not just like you know, the, the climate is just changing, like just just because like that's just it. But it, it's more specific. Um, no, and no, so, but, but let's 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 come back now to the idea. So where is the evidence that you have? Because you said you believe this. So where is the evidence that you have to believe that humans evolved? Right. Now, now human evolved, according to you, that, that took billions of years, right? Or millions, let's say millions of years. It took millions of years, right? Millions or billions, which one do you want to choose? Are you with me or not? I can't hear you. I've uh, we've lost your your voice. Maybe you muted you doing something. Can, can you speak you again? Me? 
Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you okay, now. Okay, well, I can't open yeah. new tabs. I was, I was trying to <laughs> pull up some information, but um, I can't You're right trying now, to so. cheat. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> no. Um, there, no I was just joking. I was just joking. I was trying to get numbers on, like, yes. that statistic. Um, but, yes. Um, so You're not like, going to get numbers because things research is not done like this. And, and look, even if it says 99%, I just demonstrated to you, speaking to you about uh, examples that will disprove this idea. And, and even the idea that people are excommunicated if you were to go against something. So let's say I'm excommunicating everyone who opposes me. Okay. The, the people are left out 100% agreeing with me because I excommunicated everyone who disagrees with me. So it's just very, it's, it's ridiculous to claim that the majority believe. Majority can believe if you if you excommunicate the rest. But as I said, I already given you a paper. But let's let's not stick on this topic for long. I'll Point have to look this, at this right? later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, look, 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 look at it and do some research on that because it's very important. Now, point is this. What do you believe? How do you believe humans evolved? And how long did it take? And what was the mechanism? How did it happen? Um, Please uh, don't Google it. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to Google. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, just saying, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, well, that's just, if it's not evolution, like if, if organisms did not evolve due to like, you know, natural selection or, you know, um, genetic mutations, you know, like then, you know, that's I, like, that's how I believe that they would have had to like evolve. I don't see any sort of other good. So you believe it because explain. you believe it? No, I, I think that. Um, because what you just said is circular reasoning, literally. Um. Let me let me let me elaborate on like I think that genetic information, like the um gradual exchange of like genetic information and like not just necessarily in the way that you can like, you know, go because like obviously I'm not looking at DNA under a microscope, right? Um, that I think that you can like make conclusions, like even if you don't have a microscope, <laughs> you can still like look at um, certain traits, like maybe it'd be like somebody's hair color, somebody's hair texture. You can see like some sort of like similarities to like the parents and stuff like that. I think that there is like who, which, which, which believer in God disagrees with that? Well, which does? How did you that? jump from <laughs> look, look? How did you jump from my hair looks like my mother's hair to that I was a fish in in a pond that evolved and a cell that became a fish that evolved into? Well, we're life. talking about millions, millions of years. We're not talking about like. You know, no, it doesn't. Like, billions a... of years, even. How did you jump from my hair is like my mother's hair, equals that billions of years will take a, a, a cell into human life? Because over time, you have, you know, like over time, those effects like result in diversity. Like not everybody is going. It's not as simple as just like everybody having, you know, like all it is is just. A, a, the father and the mother's genes are like all inherited like 50 50 like everybody has like some of their own mutations as a result of like um you know all, all, all we don't disagree that you inherit gen genes from your parents who disagrees with that but the claim is not that you inherit genes from your parents but i'm talking about like with regard to diversity if you're asking like how it is that like you know um I, I don't really like this phrasing, but like, if you're asking how it is that like humans can like evolve from like more simplistic sort of like organisms, then um, if if over time you have like all these mutations, it seems reasonable to me that you could have um, organisms that like you know if you go on for like millions and billions of years, you can have like like organisms that look completely different like those millions and billions of years ago, and like very different from like today so like yeah i can't go back and look at some like fish okay let me ask you let me, let me but... just explain to you what you're saying doesn't make any sense let's yeah. assume god created a man and a woman okay and they were they were multiplying and they multiplied and they passed on their genes until today that explains the phenomena that we have the phenomena that we have and we don't need to use evolution to explain that so so you all, all of what you're just saying is assumptions you're just saying because there's an observable reality that we inherit genes from our parents therefore evolution which, well, by the way, my problem with evolution is that people always jump into conclusions, the things that don't even lead you to those conclusions. So just because I inherit genes from my parents, that can be explained through, through many different ways. It, does not, yeah. has, it has nothing to do with this idea that we were a cell that came from a magic custard and then it moved into three different shapes of life and then uh, uh, humans starting by, from different animals and mating, etc. until having humans today, homo sapiens. 
Okay. Right? That that has nothing to do with me يعني, taking genes from my parents, etc. Point is this. What, I, what I'm trying to demonstrate is you're making a claim and what you're saying has nothing to do supporting that claim that you're making. So do you believe humans mated with other uh, uh, species or do you believe humans were just humans? I mean, if you go back far enough, like, is it really even reasonable to say that they were humans? You know what I mean? Like, because... <laughs> um, Okay. You know, the people the people that we see around us today aren't the same it's like what whatever monstrosity um we could have like evolved from like 10 million plus years ago or like whatever so um so i'm sorry what was your question again okay <laughs> it's, okay. <laughs> okay. it's okay look no problem point is what i want to demonstrate is one thing right Yeah. And, and and I think this will be demonstrated with a lot of atheists is that a majority of atheists believe in evolution because they're told to believe in evolution. They don't okay. believe in evolution because they've done research researching what evolution actually teaches. Right. They don't believe in evolution because they know the intricate details of how evolution works and how it or how it takes place. Right. right. So and and you just adopting a specific belief from your community is a form of brainwashing. Well, that could be said, if you're going to use the term brainwashing, you could say the same about Islam or anything. Like That's, just, yeah, that's, what, that's, that's <laughs> what atheists say. That's what atheists say. That's my problem. Well, I, my don't, problem I, is, I don't no, take my... that stance. Mm. <laughs> like, no, no, I don't no, think my... that that's a helpful way to go about it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that atheists claim that religious people are brainwashed. Even though religious, many religious people can be brainwashed. There's no doubt about that. Like I would say Christians are a great example of that. Or most Christians. So, But generally, generally, not all religious people are brainwashed. But my point I'm trying to make is that atheists are making that claim when they're themselves brainwashed to believe in these things like evolution, for example. Well, that they've not studied. They do not know the, the intricate details of, of evolution. They do not know even the mechanisms of how evolution takes place. Like, right. do, you know the, do you know the mechanisms yourself? What mechanisms like natural do you know, selection? Do you know? Do you know what or, homology is? Um, homology, not really. No. Okay. Okay. So, do you know that that it, whether natural selection is uh, random or not random? Um, How does do natural I, selection work? So, my understanding is that randomness doesn't mean like randomness means undirected, like in the context of evolution. It doesn't mean like. with regards to like whatever consequences that I might have on the organism, it doesn't mean that like um, mutation- Are there scientific papers that disagree with you that say that there are forms of directed, directed selection? Um, they don't well, attribute it to God, but they still say it's directed selection. Um, oh, I'm, I'm thinking about like variation um, and I'm not thinking about um, Um, selection particularly in that regard like um like with regards to like selection like my understanding of selection is just that you know over time certain organisms are basically just um you know killed off through natural selection it's not for it's not for the good of like the organism per se it's just like you know whatever organism is able to like survive long enough to reproduce and have the most offspring you know carries on its genes you know in the in successive generations uh that's my understanding whereas like with regards to, like you know uh, so is that the, a scientific understanding of natural selection or your understanding that's my understanding um yeah but this is my problem right you <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm not a scientist. Yes. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm not, um, by the way, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, right? Point I'm trying to make is the following, right? It is a fact that most atheists, and I've, I've done this from experience, from every atheist I come across, nearly every okay. atheist I've come across, they strongly believe in evolution, okay? Okay. But they cannot ju justify its process. They don't know the details of how evolution takes place. What they okay. do is most of them argue from authority. They claim, oh, look, scientists believe it. And when I start showing them that, okay, though, there are reasons why those people that who you're calling scientists believe it, and there are those people who disagree, and there are this, these things that happens to those people who disagree, they mm -hmm. start actually thinking again about their position because the position is just coming from a point of authority. X community of, of scientists said to me it is correct. Therefore, X community is correct. If you well, were to go to mm -hmm. a Muslim... Yeah, go ahead. As I can say, and admittedly, most people aren't really working with evolution, thinking about it like within their day-to-day -day lives, right? Like, so, like, they But don't... They strongly really... believe in it. 
I mean, um, belief is like a very interesting word, isn't it? No, they, they actually um, take it to be a fact. I, I would ask you to. I would. I would advise that you ask some of your friends. That's what I would advise. Well, I, I, I just, know what you. I know what you mean. Like, like yes. most people aren't like going like really in depth with it, and it's like really disappointing for me because like I'm interested in learning about this stuff, but I find that like a lot of Muslims are also not particularly thinking about evolution like a lot of muslims seem to me to just think that you know so and so says it, evolution is incompatible to. they don't have to i don't have to believe in this theory uh i don't have to research a theory that i need that that people are proposing me to believe in. it's not a part of my faith i'm saying you already believe it it's not like if they believe it they have to research it you understand what I'm trying to say? So if evolution is not a part of the Islamic paradigm to begin with, they don't need to bother their time with it. But I'm talking about the people who already believe in it. I'm talking about believing in something strongly without researching that thing. Okay, well, uh, then, like, I don't really think there's anything that we can really say on that because... Um... Yeah, we can, only say, <laughs> we can only say that you've not researched it in detail and you believe in it. Well, what like, do like I, for example, okay, explain. What do me. I believe? Like, what is it that I don't have? You any said you believe in to... human. You said you believe in that humans evolved. Like the reason why I conclude that they said was because you know um, there are factors like mutations. Everybody has like their own mutations, their own you know aspects of. Okay, them those mutations are not random. Um. So if if there, if there are mutations that happen in our bodies and this these mutations are directed and these mutations are God given, what is the issue? Well, How certain, does that? Yeah. Well, I mean, like certainly, like you know, humans are not adapted to like live in like very like extreme climates, like the north of like Greenland or something like that. So you're not going to see like a lot of humans, you know, surviving like those very like brutal conditions and you know surviving in that area. But um, like in regards to like factors like related to like diversity and like trying to think out like why it is it um how it is that like people evolve um you have to like account for like the environmental factors and you know the genetic factors right because otherwise like it's it's not really something you can really work with well i don't have an issue with what you just said okay <laughs> but that does does it lead to the conclusion of the question that we're asking okay no problem, Wesley. Okay, but did you come across the, the today's live stream about evolution in, the, in in detail, or you just came across the channel and you were coming to speak? Um, hmm, a little bit of both, maybe. Um, I okay. I'd seen your channel before, and I wanted to like hop in on some videos. I thought that there, I thought surely there would be more atheists because of the way that you like basically clickbaited, you know, Darwinian delusions and stuff <laughs> like that. Like, I thought surely there would be more um, atheists here that were maybe like a bit more. I don't know. I, I guess I couldn't imagine that there would be that many academics who would want to like engage in like this sort of like <laughs> um, conversation. But um, that's that's basically just like I, I saw your video. I was like, oh, this is something that's interesting, and I, I kind of I really wanted to learn more about like Sabor's like um, okay. disagreements like in more depth, like what it is about like evolution that he considered like to be i don't know just bad theory i guess you could say because i don't know what else to describe like what it is that he's trying to do honestly <laughs> like i don't okay uh, I, hopefully my position is clear right so somewhere okay. he, he's gonna come on i, I don't, i'm asking you is it clear or not <laughs> i'm just saying my position on evolution i mean um it's clear that you don't find it convincing <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, uh, let me just clarify my position, right? I don't have any issues with adaptation, like humans adapting to their environment or animals, I already mentioned that, adapting to their environment. I believe that God mm -hmm. has given us certain faculties in our cells, in our genes, in our DNA, etc., that allows us to adapt to our environment, adapt, that allows us to adapt to certain situations. There's no yeah. issues with that, right? But to jump from that into that we were a, a, a cell in a pond, a magic custard that turned into a fish and all of this, Pre, all, of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. Where does the magic custard? It's about it's from? about abiogenesis. Abiogenesis. Oh, you okay. Abiogenesis? Is abiogenesis though part of evolution? Because like my understanding is that it's the beginning. How can you have the evolution without without the start of the start of life? But my understanding biological is biological like, life. But my understanding is that like evolution doesn't necessarily concern itself with like what might have happened before. Like that's a very different. Like biogenesis and abiogenesis are like very, they're not like, are not 
necessarily part of like the theory of evolution as I understand them. Those are outside of evolution. Like evolution, my understanding is that it just deals with um, organisms and doesn't make any sort of like assertion of what might have happened before. Um, but th then you don't need evolution. Because because if, if what you're saying is the case, then we can have humans or animals that are adapting to their environments and having these mutations that are not random without having the, the theory of evolution. But the idea of like, like new Darwinism or the, the belief that there is one origin, that's a part of evolution. You don't, that's one of the assumptions of evolution. There is one, one uh, single origin. But theoretically, I mean, this doesn't really and that And that is linked to abiogenesis. How, what is that one origin? Where did it come from? You cannot just run away from this idea that how did everything start? And how did we start having that first species that you're going to say evolved into different species? You have yeah. to explain where that species came from and what kind of species it was. And then how it evolved to different species. But I don't see how evolution is like particularly incompatible. Like, let's say, I know this is not your religious belief, but let's say that you had a religious belief that God created life forms, some basic simple form of life. And then from there, like, you know, eventually this resulted in like all the diverse life forms that we see. Like, so like maybe it wasn't like a sort of like Adam and Eve story, but it was just like God working in a lab um, and found like, you know, a certain string of chemicals. And then like, ha, this is, this is life. I mean, I guess you could say that is a biogenesis. I mean, in that context, it would be, but like, you could also like argue that like have maybe a religion that like the God just like poofed religious, I mean, religious people just poofed um, life into existence without any necessary need for there to like have to be, you know, a biogenesis is my understanding. Like, I don't, I don't think that biogenesis and abiogenesis, I don't see anything that suggests that like those, like I know that a lot of scientists like either- These like, things are very important because they affect the assumptions of evolutions. Like for example, I mentioned to you, some of the assumptions of evolutions are affected, like for example, the one origin or another assumption of evolution that can be affected, which is the idea of tree of life, of, the, of, of what is the progression of the tree of life? Because we need to look at where it, it did life start and then we need to look at the time frame that took these species to evolve. And that time will make a difference for the theory. But my how understanding... Long did it take, and when it did it take, when did it happen? How long did it take it to happen? All of that will, will affect. So you will find evolutionary, quote unquote, evolutionary biologists talking about abiogenesis how, and how it is a problem. Because it is a problem. Well, certainly, you know, speaking of scientific consensus, my understanding of evolution, again, is that... It's, it doesn't concern itself with biogenesis or abiogenesis. Like as someone posted, I, I hate to read this, but it is, it's what I'm trying to say. Like it's, it's more coherent than I could string it together, unfortunately. <laughs> but they say that um, abiogenesis is not evolution. The former is an explanation for the origin of life. The latter is an explanation of the diversity of life. So evolution doesn't concern itself with the origin of life. Like that's not what the framework is used to do. It's not to posit the origin of life it's to but is the define... origin of life a part of the progression of the theory or the explanation or understanding of the theory is the i cannot just you know i'm not saying it is evolution i'm saying that understanding influences evolution it is important to look at it and understand it because it is if we did not have that look for example as i said to you that the assumption of one origin okay if we if we change that into many origins that will affect the whole theory okay um, the like, assumption of how long, when was the first humans, uh, when did the first human evolve? How long did it take him to evolve? And all of these ideas, all of these things can be influenced. How long did it take those animals to evolve? The tree of life, etc. All of these things can be influenced by abiogenesis. So to try to say, oh, I don't care about, no, I'm saying to you that specialists do care about it. Well, I know that certainly a lot of scientists like either think that abiogenesis is the more convincing explanation compared to like, you know, just um or like they don't have an explanation agreed upon explanations for it anyways right but i, I just don't see what this has to do with evolution like again like the, what happened like before... uh, look i think we are going in a circle because i, I just explained like a couple of seconds ago why but anyways anyways but, but like not... again like yeah. okay I, I i just don't do you have anything you want to say before i let you go and then let someone else on it's the boar not here <laughs> uh suppose so i don't know, took him uh, longer than he said but he's probably coming on i think go ahead, yeah I think I might be the last one here. Um, so last one to what? Uh, no, the last one in the in the in the queue. Um, well, 
Um, I don't think that if you want um, to wait for Sabur, I can keep you in the backstage. Yeah, I think that's the yeah, that, we, that'd be great. When he comes, you might, you might ask him something, you might, you might speak to him about something. This is over, yeah, because so okay. I'm curious about his questions. Okay, all right, I will okay, I'll, I'll keep you in the backstage then until he comes. Okay, all right, bye. Okay, let's see. Uh, a lot of people, I don't know if they can turn their camera on or not, but okay. Cer cerebrum machine or something like that. Cerebrum machine. Can you turn your camera on? Ryu, you have your camera on as well, but I don't see you. And I, I see your ceiling, but I'm not trying to look at the ceiling. Okay, wise man, can you give me a thumbs up? Or so? oh, wise man, you are, you are driving. Are you sure you're going to be okay to be on the video while you're driving? <laughs> okay. I'll bring you on now. I don't know what you're saying, but you uh, are mid-driving, okay. so yeah, I can put it. I can hold on. Let me just uh, post that this. That sounds very dangerous. That's how it's saying. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm good. Okay. I'm a good driver. I'm a good driver. All right, is that better? No, as long as you're safe. Are you safe though? Doing this? That's, that's oh, yeah, I'm safe. I'm safe. Okay. <laughs> I'm safe. Okay, so well, like... so. Wa alaikum salam. So you're a Muslim? Oh uh, yes, I'm a Muslim. Yeah, so streams today is for non-Muslims. I'm just trying to look for. Oh, yeah. oh okay. So, I was, I was trying to figure out. No, okay. Come on a different okay. one, inshallah. No problem. Right. Come on a different one, inshallah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. You did. You did. Start. But you're a Muslim. Are you a Muslim, Cerebrium something? Can you just confirm whether you're a Muslim or not? You look like a Muslim, so I, I don't know. Okay, Reyu, are you going to show me your face or should we move on to someone else? We've got Ihsan as well, a person called Ihsan. I've seen him maybe a few times in uh, other streams. But I'm going to keep you for a while until Sabur comes and then you can be the, the, the long discussion with you maybe. But let's see the other people. Uh, Ryu, are you able to join or no? I'd prefer to say not the same religion, but I'm arguing in favor of evolution. <laughs> Why you prefer not to say your religion? Uh, Muslims don't join, please. This stream is for non-Muslims, for atheists, those who believe in evolution. So, okay, pancake or pan, yeah, pancake something. Are you able to turn your camera on? No. Okay. Let's bring you for, for a second now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello? So you said you don't want to talk about your religion, mm -hmm. but you're arguing in favor of evolution. Uh, yeah. Okay. So start by telling us or by telling me, uh, why is evolution to you? Yeah. Okay. So I have like this three-step process I'm going to go through, but I think the two main things are you're going to get um, descent with modification. <laughs> and uh, descent from a common ancestor. And uh, you know, you're talking to Wesley about- Descent, um, is that evolution no. to you? <clears throat> uh, yeah, that would be the two things. Descent from a common ancestor and descent with modification, because- Descent from a common ancestor. And how do you know whether you, whether you, descend, you descended from a common ancestor? What do you use for that mechanism? Yeah, so you, you would make a okay. prediction- Just one right? second. Sorry, okay. Assalamu alaikum, brother Sabur. <laughs> okay, <Hello>. brother here. <laughs> Welcome, Sabur. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. everything's fine now. My yeah, yeah, is Wesley fine. was waiting for you. There was someone called Wesley. He wants to ask you questions. We'll bring him on later after this guy because we just added him right now. He sure. said he, he wouldn't you wouldn't want to state his religion, he said. Sure. Uh, can we do it like this? No. Or, okay, let's stay the way we were. Sure. Firstly, okay. I'd like to apologize to all the viewers. I had a emergency, so I couldn't actually make no, it on no, time. No, that's okay. I'm that's now okay. here. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. So uh, I was just asking him what evolution is. Yeah. He just he just joined. So we're asking him, can you just start start over, start from the beginning? Yeah. So, so can you tell us? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us what evolution is for you? What What do you consider evolution? I said uh, the two main things are descent from a common ancestor and descent with modification. I think that's the two main things. Yeah. Descent from a common ancestor. Is the common ancestor one or more? Um, 
going to go with one. It, it actually doesn't change it that much. You know, you're talking about with Wesley about um, abiogenesis. And so, you know, you've got your uh, magic custard, right? And you might say, okay, well, we've got... It's not well, my actually... magic custard. It's the, it's the atheist <laughs> magic custard. <laughs> I'm okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I've got the, the recreation of God. You know, I don't have magic custard. But yeah. Go ahead, yeah. So, you, uh, so uh, the evolutionist, right, has his magic uh, custard. And you might say, okay, well, you've got uh, four bacteria or whatever, or like four um, uh, common ancestors. But uh, that actually doesn't matter that much because I, I don't know if you know about that thing where uh, even humans, right, we all descend from a common ancestor uh, that's like quite recent. I can't remember how many thousands of years ago. But it's because there's so much like interbreeding and intermixing that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change it that much. <laughs> so are you claiming that if there is more multiple origins of life and there is one, it does not affect the, the assumptions of what you were calling evolution? And mm -hmm. it does not affect how the theory works? Yeah. So, so common ancestor, common ancestor with who? So, so if in order for me to be a common ancestor with something else, we need to be descending from same origin. So if there is multiple origins, yeah. that by default affects what a common ancestry is. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Kind of. Okay, but let's say, let's so, say, instead, of, wait, 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 hang on. Let's, okay. So let's I'm say, waiting, I didn't do anything, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, my bad. Okay, so let's say you had four bacteria as the common ancestors, right? So there were four bacteria, they had kids or whatever, right? I mean, bacteria are... Uh, um, Asexual, asexual anyway yeah. but imagine right you have four like uh original um what do you call it uh organisms right they have kids and those kids have kids and those kids have kids and then you end up with humans and giraffes and stuff like that right it's a similar concept right that you have descent with modification and they come from uh common ancestors let's say right yeah but, i mean I... It, it would it wouldn't it wouldn't change uh the idea that you know, humans are related to, ch to chimpanzees and then apes no, are related it, it, to... No, it wouldn't, but there would be severe implications <coughs> of there being four independent origins as opposed to one. Because four would mean that the environmental conditions are conducive to create life, which means there could be more than four. So um, the, the issue here is, and this is what Elliot Sober uh, emphasizes uh, what a lot of Darwinists don't actually realize and which is why he in his writings is really trying to emphasize this point that Darwin himself and Darwinists after him they try to distinguish the question of what you're calling descent with modification and today we call it you know the theory of natural selection that from the origin of life that from abiogenesis that these are two separate domains and one doesn't affect <laughs> the other and what Sober basically argues is that's not the case in the tree of life you, the two assumptions are about the origins and about the transitions and both of these are linked now i can understand that this isn't popular knowledge in fact even in academia a lot of academics they don't actually even know about sober's paradox because remember in academia there may be someone who's studying bio macromolecules looking at rna dna and you know looking at all this stuff somebody else studying the zoology and certain things that philosophers are coming up with in remote parts of the world, they're not aware of. But if you look up Sober's paradox and you look up the problems with uh, the, this, trying to separate out the origin from the, the evolution of life, the, the tree of life, it's inseparable. You simply cannot do it. So what Muhammad said right now is absolutely correct, that the origins, the amount of origins that you have, it has a direct impact on the implications of common ancestry. Now, what you said is something very interesting. You said, well, if there's four um, bacteria which lead on to, say, one particular type of organism, and that organism evolves over billions okay, of yeah, years into, yeah, into, into elephants and, and chimps and uh, human beings, those things would <laughs> have a common ancestor. The problem here is mm -hmm. there's a huge problem with your inference now because the inference... Uh, of homology that similarities is due to common descent would only work would only work well it has multiple assumptions but one of the fundamental assumptions to make it work is that there is one origin of life because if there's multiple origins of life then you can have multiple dna sequences which are identical but they don't have the same origin and on my channel you'll find paul nelson and me we did this uh, you know live stream on testing common ancestry it's about maybe 
12 hours or something, right? And all of these ideas are broken down from, you know, fr from their base Legos all the way to the complex skyscrapers they become. So I'd advise you to uh, watch that series. That's fair. There could be some, like, high-level thing that I'm completely unaware of. Um, yeah, so and just you, to say one you... thing linked, because before Sabur, Brother Sabur came on, I was literally saying the same thing to Wesley and yeah. how the abiogenesis has an effect on... And uh, most people don't have this knowledge. They think that it doesn't matter. Abi I don't need to care about abiogenesis in order for me to believe in evolution. And they, they, they disregard it as, it, as it as if it doesn't have an influence on the theory, you know? So it's quite it's quite strange. But go ahead, yeah. What did you want to say, Caribbean? Uh Yeah, so could you give, like, uh, one example of the way that it changes? Like, what, what was important about the DNA? So I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a very simple example. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the concept of a, a biological bottleneck, are you familiar with this concept? Uh, not by name, like not the name. Could you explain it? Okay, but you... you're familiar with the bottleneck. Yeah, that like, I guess if you have too few uh, of population, is that the idea? I guess, yeah, yeah you, you, you're getting close. So there is a biological constraint which constrains everything <laughs> downstream. Okay? So okay. say there is one origin, right? If there is one origin, then everything downstream has to be linked to that bottleneck. So say okay. the, say we have the say we have um, a or, orchid of life, right? We have many different um, origins, but then somehow as the tree is growing, there's some sort of bottleneck, right? Okay. What would basically happen is everything downstream would be affected by this bottleneck, right? So you wouldn't you'd be able to find lineages in terms of DNA sequences going from these nodes all the way down here you'd be able to actually do this pretty easily right however if there is no bottleneck if you can have as john maps the lamarck believed uh, and and his his ideas you know predate darwin right and you know lamarckism and neo lamarckism even nowadays is a hot topic because of epigenetics he believed that there was multiple origins of life huge 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 amounts of origins and as you have these parallel lines of evolution, you're going to have species, right, which are going to have, you know, today we can, you know, study genetics and Lamarck obviously couldn't. You're going to have DNA sequences which are similar. But those similarities are, are due to the fact that the origin, the, the, the actual environmental conditions to uh, facilitate life have, have allowed life to come in again and again and again and again. So therefore... You don't have the bottleneck, and you can't say that these genetic similarities are due to common descent. They are simply due to the fact that they have the same origin, and that origin is multiple times. It's not just once. So one of the things that um, Paul Nelson does on the um, channel in, in terms of the Testing Universal Common Ancestry, the series, and if you go to my channel and you click on playlist, you're going to find it there. One of the things he does is he breaks it down in terms of the lottery. Now, do you know that thing where, you know, there's a there's a giant um, a bowl or something and they have different numbers in there. They spin it around, they take one out and there's a sequence of numbers, right? That sequence is extremely rare. Now, if you get another machine next to it and you spin it around and you get the same sequence, that's extremely unlikely. That is only possible if there's one origin. However, if there's a huge amount of origins, then you can have any number of sequences. It, it, it's completely possible. So one another way of thinking about it is this. Have you heard of this, um, you know, human beings are 99% similar to, 98% uh, similar to chimpanzees. Have you, have you heard this uh, before? Yeah. Okay, good. So let me ask you this question. And I just, I'm only doing this not to sound condescending or anything. I, my honest view is, is simply to engage and sometimes uh, i do that in a passionate way so people think i'm being condescending but i'm not so i yeah, just want to ask you a series of questions about this yeah okay 98 percent genetic similarity between humans and chimpanzees firstly is this a number that is categorically agreed upon within the evolutionary sciences uh one thing i want to mention is that that number depends on like how you count it and excellent what you, like, excellent okay. so the number changes if you uh, compare proteins, 
RNA molecules, genes, whatever it is. You, you can do it that way. Another problem is but that... The, could I just uh, interrupt for, uh, for yeah, one sure. point? But they would agree, right, that the, uh, that the chimpanzee or gorilla or whatever is closer to us than, you know, a giraffe or whatever, when you, when you measure... Absolutely. Them. They yeah. would. But all I'm okay. doing is I'm explaining to you the background assumptions. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, I just want to ask this question. Is there any evolutionary scientist or geneticist who does that test, but before the test, they don't already believe that humans and chimps have a common ancestor? Uh, uh, an evolutionist that does it? Yeah. So, uh, well, no. <laughs> no, of, of course not. Of course not. So the question which I ask some of the opponents that I've debated is, what would be the case if they're not related? What would the percentage be? That's an interesting uh, question, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, you were saying because if they had, if there were um, multiple uh, common ancestors. No, no, we're, we're going to get to that. that okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's the juicy part later on. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. the juicy part later on, yeah? Okay, so yeah. firstly, the point that we're going to understand is it's incredibly difficult to answer that question simply because the, nobody doing the testing actually is testing if humans and chimps are related. All they're doing is they believe it's true and they're coming up with numbers based upon how they actually uh, measure, right? It's, it's got nothing to do. Now, here's, here's an interesting point. Carl Linnaeus, have you heard of Linnaeus? You know, the Linne Linnaean uh, taxonomical system that we have? Uh, no, I haven't actually heard of it. Okay, so Carl Linnaeus was a Swedish scientist who put together, you know, life into these uh, categories, and the Linnaean system is still used today. He existed before Darwin. You know, he put humans and chimps together in the same category, right? Okay. But he didn't believe they had a common ancestor. He, so the uh, idea... Mm -hmm. That would have yeah. been because of uh, similarities in traits and things like that, right? Yeah, so so let, let, me, let me just get to this point. This is very interesting. If the anatomy is similar, why on God's green earth would the genetics not be similar? It would obviously be similar. That's like the most obvious thing. So I asked this to um, an atheist, a skydive fill in Speaker's Corner. I said, what would be the null hypothesis if this hypothesis is wrong? And do you know what his answer was? Uh -huh. his, answer yeah. was his answer was randomness. <laughs> yeah, got it. His, his answer was randomness. The problem <laughs> is, you've now set up a scenario where common ancestry cannot be falsified, right? So if, yeah, okay, okay. so if we go with and look, you know, there's something in science known as logical symmetry, yeah? And I'm going to make this other point and then you respond because I've spoken for a while. Logical symmetry. Similarities are due to common descent. That, that's, a, that's a proposition. L the logical symmetry of that would be what? What would be the logical symmetry of that statement? Similarities are due to common descent. Well, something like differences are uh, due to diff um, uncommon de <laughs> descent. Yes, no. yes, separate ancestry. Okay, so. Uh, okay, but. Okay, no, well, one second, one okay, second. Okay. That logical symmetry that you acknowledged, it doesn't exist in the biological sciences. It exists philosophically, which means if we take orphan genes, which don't exist in chimps, but exist in humans, then that would mean humans and chimps don't have a common ancestor if we're just to study these. But because of methodological naturalism, human chimp ancestry and the tree of life and all of these things as a foregone conclusion and all the science is shoehorning of the data later on. But this is on. what this is what's important. But the reason the reason that isn't there is because of like the context of the uh, of the theory, right? Of the hypothesis, sorry, of evolution, right? And then the predictions that you make, right? So it's like how uh, it's kind of like how causation works one way in time and doesn't the other way. I don't know. If, I don't know if you're getting that analogy <laughs> that I'm making. No, no that, that that would be a disanalogy because okay. causation is something that we can decisively show. Okay, that, that this is important. Okay, we may have problems defining causes, and you know you have all this discussion, but we would agree that an effect follows a cause, right? We, there's certain things we would agree about, right? However, okay. Sorry. You, you see, naturalism is, according to Michael Roos, who is the most well-known academic 
in the world when it comes to Darwinism. In fact, he's published more papers than the vast majority of academics. His number in terms of impact is one of the highest in the world. So he's an atheist. He's published with Oxford, Cambridge. He's one of the top philosophers in the world, if not the top philosopher of science. He categorically said naturalism is a faith. It's a faith. The problem is Darwinists have taken naturalism and they've built a theory based upon naturalism and they want us to accept the conclusions. And what me and Muhammad and others are going to say is, yeah, your conclusion's good, but your conclusion is as good as the assumption is based upon. And the assumption is based on faith, according to even Darwinists themselves. So that's okay. the problem of us not knowing the background to these, uh, the tree of life. Okay, so you said it, it, it's disanalogous because we can show that uh, causality, that uh, effects follow their uh, causes, right? But one way of showing something is, I don't know, you know, to watch it and like, look, I, I uh, pushed this bottle and then it moved. But another yeah. way is to gather evidence uh, uh, for something. You might like make a prediction that if this is true, then I expect to see this, right? Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to draw you a circle. Okay, this is the circle of Darwinism. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and do it away from my face where it's easier. So this is the circle of Darwinism. And if you go a bit further and you make the circle of intelligent designers like this, these two circles overlap. There's an area of overlap between these two circles. Okay, okay. So for example, both of these um, theories, intelligent design is a theory and Darwinism is a theory, both of these theories can explain similarities genetically and anatomically. Both of these theories can explain adaptation. Now, when it comes to something like junk DNA, this is where, you know, Darwinists would say, actually, um, junk cannot be explained by intelligent design. And then some intelligent design proponents would say, actually, we do accept that vestigial organs can come. It doesn't get rid of design. But then other design opponents would say, actually, we can show that what was considered to be junk is no longer junk. Like, for example, the whole issue uh, on my channel the other day, I covered a paper about uh, transposable elements, which were initially thought to be useful. Then they were called junk. Then now they've been proven to be useful again. And in 2012, there was a study done by the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements and uh, Francis Collins and other scientists. For decades, decades, they believed 98% of the human genome was full of junk. Then they discovered that actually 98% was actually non-coding DNA, which they thought was junk, only 2% coded, but then 98% actually facilitated the 2% that was actually creating the proteins, and it was helping with gene expression and genes being switched on and off, and that knowledge is basically helping us medically. And if you go to my website, you will find uh, this was my thesis at university, and I actually wrote on junk DNA. And it got peer reviewed by internally and uh, alhamdulillah i got a distinction for this this is something i'm going to be publishing uh, soon uh, academically because it takes time to publish you can't publish straight away so this is peer reviewed and it's actually on my website and what you'll find there is the history of what happened with junk dna so what you're saying is you can make predictions and that can show a theory to be true however the problem is sometimes two theories make the exact same prediction okay therefore cool. your point is do you get do you get the point yeah i i do get the point uh i want to so i want to say one thing on that and then i want to get into this kind of mini presentation explanation of ev or, uh, evolution that sure i thing. had kind of, sure thing, yeah. okay um so one thing on that is um okay what do you think about this like so the uh the unfalsifiability aspect right so if you if you do walk in into a room right someone's murdered on the floor uh i don't know there's, there's a knife on the floor or something like that right um, and most people are going to say, okay, well, who murdered him? Uh, who got the knife? Uh, maybe we could check the knife for DNA, something like that, right? But you could say, well, you know, philosophically, it's possible that there was a ghost that picked up the knife and killed the guy, right? But you don't actually have a way of falsifying that hypothesis, even though it makes the same prediction as a prediction that, oh, there, a murderer walked into the room, got a knife, killed this guy. <clears throat> makes the same prediction. Both hypotheses make the same prediction, but one of them is is unfalsifiable, right? Because you can just make up any old thing and it will make the same prediction. Yeah, I mean, firstly, we need to discuss whether falsifiability uh, or what's known as the Popper's naive falsification 
is the right method for science. I personally believe it's not, and many other philosophers believe it's not. So the idea that was quite popular about 40 years ago is that if a theory makes a prediction and that prediction turns out to be false, or if there's a piece of data that falsifies uh, uh, the prediction of the theory, or if there's something that doesn't fit, that theory has failed. So that idea of naive Popperian uh, falsification, that was replaced by the idea of scientific holism, which is what a lot of philosophers subscribe to, which is why, what I subscribe to, which is a theory can have anomalies. A theory can have things which turn out to be false. It can make predictions which are wrong. It can even have sub-assumptions which are wrong. But overall, if the theory is useful, it's still valid. So that's the first point I'm going to make, that I don't think falsification is a good way of measuring whether something's scientific or not. Falsification or falsifiability, like the, the ability to falsify basically uh, potentially infinite hypotheses and make the same prediction. So, so th that's the second point I was going to talk talk about, okay. right? Okay. So when you come up with a hypothesis, technically you can come up with anything. You can come up with anything. Mm -hmm. However, we have to use Occam's razor to cut out hypotheses and actually shave down to hypotheses that we have evidence for. So have we got evidence of ghosts killing human beings for the past uh, hundreds of thousands of years, how long human beings have been on Earth, uh, yeah. life has been on Earth, animals kill each other. It's been going on for millions of years. Living things kill living things using blunt instruments or horns or whatever it is. So we have plenty of evidence of killing happening from that perspective, humans killing each other. When it comes to, and even this is interesting, if we go back to early human civilization a couple of thousand years ago, you have spears and humans killing each other. You've got that. So we will shave down hypotheses such as it was a pink giraffe, it was a ghost, <laughs> and we'll stick to its fact as a human based upon the fact that we've experienced that in the past. So there's nothing okay. wrong with shaving down those things based upon your past experiences. Okay. Okay. Um... So, okay, on that, let me just ask you a right. question on that, Sir uh, yeah. What do you what do you believe falsifies the theory of evolution? Okay, so the, some of the things I've heard is okay. Well, if you found a rabbit, no, no, not not, not what you've heard, but what you no. believe. What can yeah. we discover that will lead us to the conclusion that the theory of evolution is false? Yeah, so technically, something like finding a rabbit um, uh, before you find. Um, uh, I don't know what the term for this is. No, no, so, now, so I, I, I'll explain before, to you. Before any mammals were there, like, you know, before uh, yeah. reptiles. Okay. Yeah, so basically, look, what you're referring to is the popular phase that um, to refute Darwinism, all you need to do is show that they are rabbits in the pre-Cambrian, yeah? Mm -hmm. So before the Cambrian explosion, there was rabbits. Now, the problem with this is, and this is something I've discussed on my channel previously, I think with Paul Nelson or, or whoever, <laughs> The fact is that in of itself will not actually disprove Darwinism. It will not actually make a difference at all. If we found rabbits in the Precambrian, all it would mean is that there's rabbits in the Precambrian. It wouldn't mean well, that. The, I'll, I'll explain. It, okay. I'll, I'll explain why. I'll explain why. The reason being is because finding anything out of sequence. If the theory fundamentally is based upon naturalism and everything has one origin, so the origination probability is close to zero and the transition probability is close to one, which we get from the origin of species that Darwin believed there was unlimited changes that could be made, then it doesn't matter what animal you find. And I'm going to give you one thing that will falsify. You see, if someone says to me, how do you prove Islam is false? Yeah, And then I say to them, I'll tell you how you can prove Islam is false. You can prove Islam is false by going to the moon, digging down a mile deep, and if you don't find the words la ilaha illallah, then Islam is false. So I've given a criteria which is impossible to actually validate, which is what the Darwinists do by speaking about rabbits in the premium. I'll tell you one thing which can falsify it, according to Darwin. <laughs> Darwin said that if it can be shown that any organ was put together without numerous successive slight changes, then my theory would absolutely break down. So Darwin was adamant that gradualism, if it broke down, it would break down his theory. Gradualism is to Darwinism what monotheism is to Islam. 
it's the crux of it and gradualism has been absolutely shown to be wrong in the fossil record and and do you acknowledge that gradualism has been like totally dismantled by the fossil record uh gradualism totally dismantled by the uh no i haven't seen uh, anything about that um you know you always see scientists going to uh, great efforts to show that each thing can be shown by gradualism like the eye or uh, uh i'll give i'll give you evidence I'll, I'll give you okay. evidence right i'll give you direct evidence the first person the first person to note that the fossil record doesn't fit with gradualism was darwin darwin in chapter six of his book he actually said this he actually said that the fossil record doesn't fit his theory and he was really worried about this now he gave an answer and the answer is known as the artifact hypothesis the artifact hypothesis is the hypothesis that the the fossil record is not well preserved because of two reasons one things haven't been preserved two we haven't been looking long enough so according to darwin it was the imperfection of the fossil record which gave the impression that there was no gradualism and he believed gradualism existed however what happened is niles eldridge and stephen jay gould in the 1970s and they were paleontologists they exposed the fact that since darwin's time to now the idea of gradualism has died in, paleontolo in paleontology because we've found time and time again a single pattern and it's not gradualism the cambrian explosion which darwin was worried about got worse over time what they found was this they found in the fossil record this stasis so species remain the same for millions of years uh, hundreds of millions of years then you get this massive punctuation okay then you get stasis and you get punctuation now what they did is they came up with the punctuated equilibrium theory and just to give you an idea of this theory imagine a 24 hour clock in a 24 hour clock between 3.8 billion years and us today you would expect life to evolve gradually okay however in the 24 hour clock in less than two minutes the majority of life came about there are 35 known phyla and 20 of those phyla came together in the Cambrian. So the majority of life Just came quick. together in less than two minutes. Sorry. And this is all against gradualism, by the way. And this is well documented. Right. In but, Stephen but when you say book. gradualism, uh, yeah. you, you don't let, like let, 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 me, let me just give you the last reference, yeah? yeah. Stephen, yeah. Jay's, uh, Stephen Jay Gould's book, <clears throat> The Structure of Evolutionary Theory. It's a huge book. Read that book and you'll find all the evidences that I'm talking about. Now, sir, I want to add, just before you answer, it's going to be very quick. On the ghost thing, uh, just linking it to, to the example that you said, it is the same example. If I were to say to you, my criteria is find the red eye. What is the red eye? It's the eye that, that if you use, you can see these ghosts, but you cannot see them with our naked eye, right? You uh -huh. say to you, what, to me, what is the red eye? The red eye is buried somewhere in the universe and some specific planet. If you dig deep enough with the correct speed and the correct, uh, you know, uh, correct points, you will find that red eye. And that's how you will find the ghost that I said that killed the animal. Problem is you're yeah. not getting the, the ridiculousness of these claims. But okay. when someone says, bring me something that refutes this idea of the reality is you are attacking Certain theories are, are you saying these things are not full survival? There's falsifiable. a lot of I'm struggling to keep all the threads. I've written, yeah, okay, go down, ahead, but... go ahead. I'll let okay. you speak. No problem. So, I just the first thing was when you say gradualism, you don't mean like slowly, you mean like gradually, uh, gradual changes, like you get step by step changes, right? You don't mean like slowly, right? So, okay, so this, this is important to understand when we say gradually as human beings, we have our own subjective understanding of what gradual means gradual according to the fossil record what it's basically showing and the rate at which um, we actually have the evolution of life so we're not talking about mine or your understanding of gradual steps we're talking about if darwin's theory is correct if the earth is old as 3.4 billion years 4 billion years whatever it is if this is the case and this is the level of complexity that we have. This is the level of um, DNA that we have in any particular animal. Then how is it that life evolved in this period? And the the actual answer is, according to the, the gradualists, is that, say, 500 million years ago, we would expect this many species. 
uh, 1 billion years ago we would expect this um, 20 phyla would not come into existence during the Cambrian right you'd expect things to gradually come but they don't come gradually they come in punctuated equilibriums that's the problem and this is well documented uh, I don't get why you'd expect them to come gradually, but it's gonna it's gonna get so many. We're gonna spiral into so many like details and like alleyways. So I, are, I, are you I, saying? Are I, you I saying? It, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Answer. answer Look, okay. Darwin gives you the answer. Uh -huh. Darwin gives you the answer. Darwin's answer is this. Darwin's answer is there is no God involved. Darwin's answer is everything comes about due to natural selection. Okay. Yeah, no. and and those that those selection pressures will change. Like we know that organisms w can go through a period of fast uh, change because you know the the environment changes quite quickly or whatever, um, and sometimes they'll stay static for a while. So, okay. sorry, so so, so yeah. you're saying if the environment changes quickly, the changes will happen in the cells and DNA quickly. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Because who who which which who said that before you? Which which scientist says that? Um. What's that book? Um, because, uh, are you saying is... to me, these random, sorry, are you trying to convince us right now? Uh -huh. that these random changes, yeah. if, they, if we've got five hurricanes happening today, just in, in front, yeah. around us, then because of all of these quick uh, changes, look, if you're refuting gradualism by saying that yeah, gradualism no, no, is not wait. time, no, no, sorry, sorry. If you're yeah. refuting this idea, this principle, this understanding of gradualism by saying it is not a long period of time, then can you explain to us why are we not seeing species that are evolving today in front of us? Um, why that does not because it does not need a long time. So can you explain to us? No, no, it does need a long time. What I mean is that the time frame can change. So you can get different amounts of change uh, it, uh, of an organism, right? Um, so so the example, ones that change quickly, million, the ones so that change quickly. A million years. A million years is a long time for us, right? You can have uh, three units of change in a million years, or you can have five units depending on the environment, right? So uh, what was I going to say? Um, no, no, but are you still limiting? You're still limiting the number here, and you're still saying it's taking a long time. But if you if you're saying only three or five, but you're claiming that you can have these massive changes in genes and massive changes in organs and massive changes just because the environment changes a little bit quickly, which I don't think that it's a claim that scientists make. And if you were making that claim, then you have to just to, to explain to us that if you got certain on what certain massive, species what? and animals Sorry. that evolve very quickly, can you give us an example of that happening today? Why are we not seeing this? Yeah, but it quickly still wouldn't be that quick. So what? What? So Sabur, can you tell me what was the time frame for uh, twenty phylum appearing? Was it like ten years, or was it like <laughs> millions of years? Yeah. So not. So this is a very common contention. Um, mm -hmm. The time period of the Precambrian. We're talking about hundreds of millions of years, right? Um, so we're we're not talking about. I mean, sorry. No. Let me repeat that again. When it comes to the Precambrian, which is I think five hundred and eighteen million years ago. And within that, say, we, we take a segment of time, which is 100 million years. Now, 100 million years, you're going to say, oh, my God, that is so much time. And everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, that's so much time. How is that rapid? The reason why it's rapid is because the Earth is 4 billion years old. And the origin of life, which is supposed to be 3.8 <clears throat> billion years to now, mm -hmm. that means that the Life evolving, it should have happened in a gradualistic way. But if life is remaining uh, st uh, the same for millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, then you go through these spikes and then it goes down and it goes through spikes. Now, when me or you are saying 100 million years, we're thinking, oh, my God, it's a long time. But in the geological record, that is not a long time. 10 million years in the geological record is the blink of an eye. It's literally nothing. So the Cambrian explosion, which took millions of years, is only two minutes, less than two minutes of the 24-hour clock. And I, want, I just want to say something. Yeah? I could be completely wrong. Muhammad could be completely wrong. You could be completely wrong. Everybody who's commenting here could be completely wrong. Who is not completely, completely wrong is the countless scientists and paleontologists who've testified that the fossil record does not show gradualism. Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould, when they came up with their paper and they pushed it out, this idea of punctuated equilibrium, en masse, this created a paradigm shift within paleo paleontology. So the things we're talking about are not fringe things on the margin. These are well 
establish scientific Can historical I just facts. So, yeah. I, I, so are you saying that uh, the, the claim is right, that there's too much change per unit time, or is the claim that change should happen uh, uniformly? Both, and, and they don't contradict each other. Both these claims are true and they don't contradict each other. They complement each other. Okay. So my understanding is that change doesn't have to happen uniformly, that uh, change, uh, faster change in environment will uh, will induce more change per unit time. Um, and that's been shown. I, I'd have to find, because I can't find everything. No, 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 no. no. What, what you're referring to is this. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what you're referring to. Uh, what you're basically saying is, say in the period of 50 years, there is a group of sheep, right? And this sheep are the environments remaining stable right so the changes in the sheep due to natural selection natural selection is not really making that much change then you get this severe winter which is coming every year for the next 50 years all the sheep that don't have enough wool they die out and so they go through this rapid change where the population changes so all the sheep become woollier because the woollier sheep survive and the less woollier one die out now these types which you are calling rapid from a 50, 50 year perspective, that does not make a difference over hundreds of millions of years. Like natural selection is well documented that you're gonna have these small scale changes in populations and those are gonna change according to environments. They're gonna go up and down by a few years, but that doesn't mean that the fossil record should show such punctuation. If what you're saying is correct, wouldn't Darwin know this? Wouldn't Darwin simply say about the Cambrian that the Cambrian, it can be explained by the fact that natural selection works fast and slow. He didn't actually say what you said. He said the opposite. He said, once we know the fossil record, we will see that actually you have gradualism. So if your solution was a real solution, Darwin would have come up with it and he wouldn't have considered well, the Cambrian that, as not, the problem. That's not necessarily true because, you know, he could have made a mistake and people will develop an, an idea afterwards. But I will. Uh, look no, no, at I, 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 I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. You don't agree that he, he could be mistaken about. No, no, no. I don't agree that your current idea that you have that this is not something that Darwin didn't consider, ah, because okay. Dar because Darwin came up with obviously he took it from Thomas Malthus's you know uh, the, uh, you know supply demand thing in ca capitalism, the this idea of rapid change uh, in a in a population uh, due to natural selection and then slower he was at the galapagos for a long time he was traveling he saw this th this thing happening in fact he used remember artificial selection which is rapid evolutionary change happening due to human human intervention he used this as one of the arguments for natural selection so he extrapolated artificial selection to natural selection so what you're saying he's like He's obviously aware of what you're saying, but he didn't use that as an answer to the Cambrian, which, which is why I'm saying to you that no scientist has said what you're saying because it, it just doesn't fly. It, it, it's it's okay. not actually yeah. a solution. Yeah. No, you're, 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 you're trying to put, you're trying to use a band-aid on, on a dam that's broken. You're using a plaster, a little plaster. To, it's, it's not a solution that's going to work. Yeah, I got you. I, I could be wrong. I'd have to uh, check uh, each thing. But what was I going to say? Okay, um, I want to say about, okay, the rabbit in the Precambrian. Um, okay, wouldn't that absolutely cast doubt on whether um, the organisms we have now, uh, you know, relate relate to each other in the way that we think they do at least, right? Because, well, you had a rabbit in the Precambrian, so maybe rabbits aren't more closely related to um, other mammals than uh, reptiles. Okay, okay. Let's let's ask a similar question on that. Can you say to me what was the scientific response when the Cambrian explosion happened? What was the response? Because it was not expected. So can you tell us what did they respond with? Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure about what the question is. I'm saying, looking at the previous theory pre-Cambrian uh, pre explosion, we did not expect something like the Cambrian explosion to happen. Right. Uh -huh. So it is similar to the idea that you're saying of finding a specific species. I don't That's think right. it, it is, it is right. the same idea. It's the same idea. So when we found the Cambrian explosion, what was the responses of it, scientists it's the finding these species that we did not expect to find the, uh, of it, these specific species? It's the same idea if 
um, uh, what do you call it? The precambrian. You understand my question? Falsify. Yeah, I understand the question. You're saying like, oh well, you you the first hurdle, and you just like you're wishy washy. You change up your theory a bit so it can account for it, and then you carry on. So you're always going to believe uh, evolution no matter what. That's that's the the idea. No, no, I'm asking you. What did they say? Go ahead, Saburi. Yeah, so Sir um, what Muhammad is saying is he's saying you pointing out the rabbit in the Precambrian is equivalent. I mean, if we were to break down your statements from a purely logical point of view, you're simply stating what would Darwinists do when they see something that they don't expect. So what he's mm -hmm. simply done is he's asked you the question, that's already happened, not with one rabbit, but that's actually happened with millions of fossils down there in the ground, which, which are out of place. So he's simply asking you, you're giving him a hypothetical scenario of there being something out of place. He's giving you an actual scenario of multiple things out of place. And he's saying, what was their reaction? Do, do you see what he's yeah. doing? Yeah, I do get it. Very clever, um, by the way. <laughs> my, my, my question would be, um, yeah, are they this uh, analogous, right? Like, is the Precambrian... Uh, uh, explosion is sorry the Cambrian explosion is it the same as finding a rabbit uh, in the Precambrian and yeah absolutely and Absol I, I, uh, I, I even more I would say it's even that's, worse that's something Just that so... that's something that uh, I don't know and I'd have to check it, it like, no, I, I'll explain yeah. to you why because no. in both cases something is out of place but however the second case is a false narrative and I'll tell you why if you tell me how do you know Islam is false and I say to you Islam is false if you can go to the moon, dig a mile deep, and it doesn't say the statement of faith. You're going to say, yeah. you've just created a false thing. Rather, what you're going to say is, I'm going to show you Islam is false by showing a prophecy came to be false. So that's what yeah. Muhammad is doing. Muhammad's saying, yeah. stick so, to the facts to, of to, what we have of something out of place. With the, you, want the something that is, uh, you want to be able to falsify it in like a non-ridiculous non way, um, which, yeah, I'd have to look into that as well. Um, and by thing? the way, it's just sorry, it's on uh -huh. the idea of the false record, th this issue that Darwin had when he said that we've got an issue with the false record, imperfection, the chapter on the imperfection of the false record in his book, he said that how many years ago? And he was pointing out that we did not yet see fossils, but we've been discovering fossils since. Yeah. And these fossils that we've been discovering since are only going against more on the idea and the theory rather than supporting what he's saying. So he just found this lame excuse of we did not look hard enough. We did not look deep enough. Well, that, that was but, separate, right? That was about um, uh, transitional uh, it's fossils, It's the same right? thing. It's the no, same no, thing. it's the same issue. Same thing. So, so uh, uh, one thing um, I, I don't want to move on from because I think Muhammad asked a very good question, which I'm going to steal and put in my next in the book as a good example, right? <laughs> Essentially, the Precambrian rabbit is the same problem as the what we have in reality right now, which is that we have Cambrian uh, animals which we cannot trace back to Precambrian ancestors, which is the same problem here. What is your explanation for that? Uh, Cambrian. Uh... And so we can't trace back. Well, yeah, the explanation is going to be something like, oh, well, we haven't found them yet. But because. Excellent. And that's yeah. what they would say about the rabbit. And that's then I. Exactly. No, <laughs> then then I. <laughs> no, no. You've not because, found it yet. You have wait, to look wait, wait. harder. You, you, you might say that, but it would cast doubt on your entire tree of life, right? Uh, that's what. No, that's Do you know how many the times the tree of life know, has been no changed? Longer, you know, you know how many? Sorry, 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 wait, sorry, wait, I sorry, really have to make this point. Wait, I really have to make this point. Okay, you, would know, you would no longer be able to say, oh, cows are related, are more closely related to mammals than they are to reptiles, because who knows, maybe there was a Precambrian cow that, that modern day cows are descended from. No, right? no. That, see, see, you see what's happening is the same thing is happening. You're giving a very um, unusual criteria to falsify the theory. Let's stick to Darwin never said to falsify my theory, find rabbits in the Cambrian. Yeah. Darwin said to falsify my yeah. theory, show okay, that gradualism, it doesn't just work. To address, and just, it doesn't. To address, just to address the problems that you, you brought up with it. You said, you know, it's not a good criteria for falsification. That's fine. Okay, I'll leave it. Uh, but just to address the problems that you brought up with it. No, no, no. Um, you've, you've not, sorry to interrupt you, but you've not uh, understood why I asked the question. Yeah. It's not about why the idea is a good, is a good, a good uh, principle to falsify or not. 
the, the point I'm making is that it is not falsifiable. So what you were accusing Sabur with, when you were trying to attack the principle that you're trying to use with the ghost, it is the same principle that is attacking the, your ideas and your beliefs. Because the idea today of what they call theory of evolution, it is not falsifiable. Whatever the new data that we come that opposes what, you, what we used to believe, uh -huh. you just rearrange things. You talked about the tree of life. Yeah, I don't know how many times the tree of life have been rearranged. You know? And we that, were talking about musical fair. taste before. The question would yeah. be to actually look at the, uh, um, does th that thing falsify like the, you know, the core theory or is it falsifying a detail? Why is the, the core of the theory? Can you make it? Well, it would be, um, uh, the seventh modification and the common ancestor. Okay, so, so okay. Right? look, can I just summarize something and you let me uh, know whether you agree or disagree with it? Okay, okay. okay. So, the theory of Darwin needs four things, okay? Uh -huh. It needs variation. Yeah. It needs a mechanism of hereditary. There needs uh -huh. to be a mechanism by which you... Um, so if there's a random mutation, it has to be fixed in the population. It has to be transferred into the population. Okay. Yeah. The, the third is you need differential reproduction, meaning you need there to be the species that have the um, the ability to have offspring, which, which have mutations which are beneficial. They basically outlive the ones that don't. So you have differential reproduction. Right. Uh -huh. So like, you know, the sheep example I gave that the sheep who are woolier, they survive in winter and four, you need time. Do you agree with this? Uh, so what's the fourth one? Sorry. Time. Time. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. You're going to say, you're going to say those things exist anyway. So like you're automatically, you're just defining yourself as right because, you know, like it's like saying evolution is true if uh, spheres are uh, spherical or something. No, like no, that. no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm I'm first showing you the components of the theory, okay, okay, and then the implications. These are the ingredients, okay. So you're gonna go and cook in the kitchen, and you got four ingredients. These are the four uh -huh. ingredients, okay. Now these ingredients, when you mix them up, what you come up with is Darwin's theory. These four things are absolutely necessary. Now okay. the time component here is fixed, and what is it fixed to? Uh. I I don't know like it's I fixed guess. to the fossil it's fixed to the fossil record. Oh okay. okay. So you see one of the things that Darwinists do and it's very interesting they say and Richard Dawkins says this by the way and you can go google it. Richard Dawkins says we don't need the fossil record and the reason why they say we don't need the fossil record is uh, because the fossil record doesn't support darwinism. Exactly. So, yeah. And uh, now check this. But all we need uh, is just okay. To once be clear, again, I, I'd have to like check every single no, 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 thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, that's that. No, that, that's got the video on the channel. You can go on timestamps yeah, yeah, and check whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, no, no you, you, you can check whatever you want. Now, here's yeah. the thing. What does he say? We don't need, we don't need the fossil record because we have molecular genetics. But the problem is for you to come up with timings, for you to have even molecular clocks, you actually need to date them according to fossils. So. <laughs> One aspect of Darwin's theory which is inescapable is time. Now, since time is fixed, and we know what that time is, roughly 3.8 billion years, and now using the other three ingredients, which is differential reproduction, uh, heritability, and variation, random mutations, yeah? Now we have to go from the monad to the man. We have to go from the simplest uh, organism which can replicate all the way to, you know, human beings, homo sapiens, and, and all of the tree of life. The problem now is that according to the time that we have, we have to show a sequence of events in the fossil record, which shows this gradualism, because that's what the theory purports. Darwin said, if anything can be shown that it didn't come together in numerous slight successive modifications, then his theory would absolutely break down. He's categorical about this, okay? What we've seen in the fossil record is stasis, punctuation, stasis, punctuation, stasis, punctuation. So while you're saying Darwin, um, Darwinism or Darwinian theory or evolutionary theory, whatever it is, hasn't been falsified or, or there aren't these uh, huge problems with it, Darwin, according to his criteria that he actually gave, we can say on multiple accounts that the theory has decisively failed. Um, 
Okay, according to. Um, okay, according should to we Darwin's let you let him go? And uh, because it's been a while now. And, yeah, and um, we, we, we've I given you uh, like. I'll let I you say I'm... the last thing you want to say. I'll let you say the last thing that yeah. you want to say. But we need to I'm give other be... guests some time as well because it's been yeah, maybe so... 45 minutes for you or something like that or more. So go ahead, go ahead, yeah. say the last thing you want I, to say. I guess I'm not going to be able to get into you know my whole thing, but um, I want to say about falsifiability, right? Um, so. You might say, okay, falsifiability, that's not the right way to go about things. You have to have like a philosophical uh, discussion about that. I don't think I'd be able to do that, but okay, fine. But the way you responded about, um, you know, there are, we know that people kill people. We know that animals kill each other um, and things like that. Um, so I, I, I put, I wrote that down. I gave it a name, like, I don't know, a strong natural case or something like that. That sounds professional, but um yeah, if you can show that, look, we've got this evidence that evolution is true, like this natural, naturalistic evidence that e evolution is true, right? Then that would be just like having DNA evidence of a murderer killing someone rather than it being a ghost. Um, yeah. No, no, because <laughs> one is um, something that we can measure, something we can see, something we can observe, and the second is a metaphysical research program is a philosophical idea is something which can only be subscribed to by faith no and l l let's just be very very clear there is no naturalist worth their salt in this entire world and no academic that i know worth their salt that has said anything except fundamentally naturalism is something that cannot be proven sorry i do not Sorry, not proving naturalism, proving that um, uh, e e uh, evolution, right? Not proving no, but, naturalism. No, no, but what I'm what I'm basically trying to get to is this: if Darwinism is fundamentally based upon naturalism, which I think is very clear, if naturalism is unproven, then Darwinism cannot be proven. Okay, but I don't. Th that's my point. I don't think you have to assume naturalism, just like you don't have to assume natural naturalism to assume that. Uh, a human murdered another human with a knife rather than a ghost did it. Sorry, you, don't have to uh, you say you don't have to assu assume naturalism in order for evolution to work, um, or in order yeah, for you think... to have the models, in order for you to for the models that you have today to make sense. Yeah, I don't think you have to. Um, but I, I, I think, think you need to. I'll give you. Uh, I think you need to rethink that because that's that's totally okay. Like, I, I think I think you need to just think what you just said. Like for example, <laughs> if we were to, assume, I'll give you a very basic, like ridiculous example. Let's say okay, there is mutations. Uh -huh. And then a, a person okay says this mutation happens through God's uh, will and God's intent. Yeah, you cannot then come and say, "Oh, but God doesn't exist because I'm a naturalist, and it has to be explained through natural processes." Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you a very That's basic right. example. I, you're but, not understanding the implications of naturalism on your theory but, but because you, if yeah. if we don't take naturalism, naturalism, we can yeah. bring uh, supernatural or metaphysical realities to explain the same conclusions yeah. or, or processes that are taking place. But bring it to the Your voice is cut, by the way. And I have to let you go. <laughs> Anyways, maybe cut it the right time. Like... Okay, uh, I can't hear you. Try to mute yourself and unmute again. Try to mute and unmute yourself. I think it's your connection or something like that. Okay, I'll let you go. Uh, anyways, it was it was nice talking to you because we don't want to go in around for for a very long time, you know. And yeah. other guests are waiting. Okay. Well, I definitely uh, want to. I definitely want to thank um, our guest here, and please join us again. Uh, it was a very pleasant conversation. Yeah, and 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 by the way, uh, brother Sabur has got a channel that is a lot of it is directed towards evolution, etc. Uh, so it would be very nice if he's doing a live stream. If you want to continue a discussion on a specific field, a specific thing, you can check yes, his sir. channel. It will be in the title, you know. I've I've, I've uh, I mentioned his channel oh he's gone i think he's gonna bring wesley because he's been i brought him from the beginning we had the discussion for a while uh, but he went he had some questions for you or something like that sure. how are you wesley good hey can you hear me yeah, yeah i can hear you so I'm you good. said you had some questions for brother so you can, can ask him now <laughs> well know. like you, th there's just so much you guys talked about i'll have to you pretty much answered my questions and some okay. some of that um but i i, I do want to ask a couple of questions what's the name of your thesis sabor could i uh, so if you go to my channel, uh, if you go to my website, and okay. there 
should methodological adapt should methodological adaptionism be replaced so this is okay. something i did as part of my master's thesis uh and this is what i'm going to be inshallah publishing in a scientific journal it's going to take some time because it has to go sure. through all this revision and stuff right. but alhamdulillah i mean it it, it it's something which uh, i got a distinction for and it's been peer reviewed uh by other uh, people from philosophy background so it's a solid piece it's a historical piece uh, but it also shows uh, not only the changes in evolutionary biology but it also shows the epistemic implications of uh, dogmatically holding on to antique ideas such as junk dna which has been very problematic uh, for the evolutionary sciences uh, do you think that you'll be doing any more um, sort of like, um, I don't know if you call them collabs, but I, I guess debates with people like Aaron Ra or Forrest Vakai is one of a kind of popular channel who does stuff related to evolution. Is it? I haven't heard of Forrest Vakai. Uh, Aaron Ra, I had two discussions with him. I, I'm more than happy to discuss with Darwinists. In fact, you know, just to let you know, um, you know, this is something I, I, I'm I'm willing to do at any point. I mean, I've had, just to give you an example, an answer from one professor that I reached out to, uh, and he's from uh, a background of uh, evolution. Um, he basically said that he doesn't debate theists. So I'm actually looking for opponents. I, I the, my problem is a lack of opponents. Uh, I have a big, I have a big, sort of, issue with this idea that you can just talk to an audience and convince them of your ideas. I believe for anybody to believe your ideas, they need to be put to the fire. They need to be actually put on stage. Like you have to battle an opponent on a particular issue. The problem is as well, not only that these Darwinists don't come out to debate, but sometimes mm -hmm. when you do actually have a discussion with a nuanced evolutionary biologist, they don't actually disagree with you. So, for example, um, you will go online, you will find a debate, a discussion between myself and Professor Jeremy Pritchard. And he's an atheist evolutionary biologist. He's a professor of biology at uh, Birmingham University. And we have a discussion, does evolution undermine God? And we both agreed it doesn't undermine God. Mm -hmm. We both agreed about the philosophy of science. We both agreed about changes and all these types of things. So I'm looking for opponents. Uh, I have no problem. But I, I, I really don't want to talk to Aaron Ra again. I've had enough of him. <laughs> I think, <laughs> subhanAllah, uh, the, the people at, the, at an academic level are very are much more humble than the little minions yeah. that walk, that they use their name, <laughs> right? They use their name. But when you speak with those academics, I think most of the time they do agree with you. Like when you oppose certain issues, they would say to you, we don't know. For example, we don't mm -hmm. have an answer for this right now. But when you speak to some of the minions who use their own names, if you speak to them, they will act like as if they know everything. This is an established reality. We've got answers for these questions, right? Mm -hmm. So so when you look at these type of uh, types of debates, you see that people are agreeing most of the time. Yeah, well, that's why I think that all that plays together, why I think that navigating this stuff is just like very difficult because again, like a lot of people are not familiar with like many aspects of evolution. And then like a lot of people, the impression I get though, is that like a lot of the time in like academia, it's sort of like, closed off in sort of a way like most academics I don't think particularly will be doing like debate channels or anything like that anytime soon um, that's it's the impression it's that I get it's, it's, it's interesting Wesley I'll tell you something that I found uh, myself to be true and I believe anybody who looks into this will will agree the vast majority of evolutionary biologists they do not get involved in theism atheism debates they do not get involved in these cynical backs and forths and this the vast majority <laughs> of them for example there was a study conducted in the uk some years ago and they asked scientists about their perceptions of um uh, you know certain things and richard dawkins came up negatively again and again so mm -hmm. literally people like richard dawkins are not the scientists who are actually doing the scientific work what you will find wesley is you will find there's a lot of arguments there's a lot of debates there's right. a lot of discussions mm -hmm. however one thing i want you to keep in mind they are there are academics on the other side of the fence who are Darwinists, who are atheists, and these guys do not actually say what Richard Dawkins says. I'll give you an example. Michael mm. Roos, 
he commented on Richard Dawkins' book, The God Delusion. Michael Roos is a bigger academic, a bigger Darwinist than Richard Dawkins in academia. He said, reading The God Delusion made me embarrassed to be an atheist. It made me embarrassed. So I want you to look up people like Michael Roos. Look up a debate between Faz Rana and um, Michael Roos about the origin of life. Okay. Like right. th These are real academics who are willing to openly say that a lot of this new atheist rhetoric is nonsense. Yeah, and I, I still, I'm kind of curious as to why it is that people like Richard Dawkins tend to like get much of the spotlight in the first place. It, um, but I guess that's just a... I, 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 actually, <laughs> I, actually, I actually have an uh, explanation, I believe, of that. And that explanation is that people love simple narratives. Religion is evil. God doesn't exist. Evolution undermines God. Let's make the world a better place. These are the simplistic narratives he has. Oh, However, if you speak about biology in a very nuanced way, oh, the fossil record doesn't quite fit Darwinism, but there's other areas that there could be synergy. Anybody that's going to be nuanced, they're not going to sell. What sells is controversy. What sells is um, binary narratives about the clash of civilizations. So Richard Dawkins is a very polar figure. That's why he's popular. He's aggressive. That's why he's popular. Academically, he's considered by people like E.O. Wilson to be a science journalist, right? He's not even considered to be a scientist. So people like, um, you know, Richard Dawkins, they are popular because they're essentially actors and the world is their theater. Yeah, well, um, I think okay, that... Wesley, let me ask you this. Let me ask you, let's get some benefit from this discussion. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. But first is asking if there is any atheist, because they all ran away now, we don't have any more, right? If there, it's been a while. If there, any, if there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. If there is any atheist who would like to join and talk about evolution, they can join. But generally, I want to ask, uh, Wesley, let's let's talk uh, for more of a general discussion. What is your position? Are you are you a believer in God? Do you completely reject the existence of a creator? Do you... Mm. I, I don't believe in a God. I, I think that, speaking of simple narratives, I think that religions provide a lot of simple narratives that influence societies. And I think that, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to talk about into, like, all the depth of, like, how they influence societies and how they influence the way that we make decisions. But the more and more that I try to, like, study religions it seems to me that i see a lot of similarities and a lot and the differences to me seem to be um the differences are like really interesting because when we talk about do you, they all agree on god's existence i don't i don't think that i i don't see any do you agree evidence. with me right so so though all of this evidence is also all of, the, all of those religions has those idea has this idea and you also spoke in the beginning when i talked to you about the fitra and how it's innate to have this idea of existence. Of I don't think it's innate. This. I wouldn't say that it's innate. I'd say most people are predisposed to belief in some sort of higher power. But I don't think, like, I think that some people with certain, I don't want, uh, like, altered states of consciousness, let's say, like, maybe they have, like, schizophrenia, or maybe they're autistic, or maybe they just perceive reality in a non-typical, uh, an atypical way. Like, I think that, people like that might not necessarily be like predisposed to believe in like a higher power or anything like that in a particularly um, similar way well, as we, like we're the talking about people, people. We're talking about people who are younger who are not yet influenced by, by other people around. So the study, general, is focused, the study is focused on, on children. People who are not yet influenced by all of these ideas that you're referring to. The study concludes, as I said to you before, is that they have an innate receptivity to God, or the, creation, the creator, right? But that's not the only thing. We, we've got many other evidences as well. And I said to you, in the past, if you look at the past, every civilization had some sort of a higher power that they that they looked at or they believed in, right? So this idea is it's it's a part of your human nature. That's, what, that's the reason I'm using this terminology, because mm -hmm. it already existed. Okay, what about China? I mean, China doesn't necessarily. I would say that there are a lot there of are, there superstitions. Are. So, there. so we Wesley, just an important point about China because obviously <laughs> I've been looking into China a lot the last couple of years. <laughs> um, China actually has had one of the fastest demographic changes in terms of religiosity, according to some estimates. China is going to be the largest Christian nation on earth in a few decades. I just want you to imagine that China. Is going to be one of the largest is going to be sorry the largest christian nation on earth okay now mm. have you heard of the falun gong 
Oh yeah, I'm I'm a little bit familiar with them and okay. some of the things they do back you, and Okay, do you know that this religion which came about some 40 50 years ago, I don't remember. Mm. This religion before it was persecuted and the organs were harvested, all this stuff happened. Do you know this was actually one of the fastest growing religions in China? Um uh, it doesn't surprise me particularly that much. Christianity um, is growing in China massively, right? Mm -hmm. um, Islam in terms of China is quite curtailed, so it, it's, it's not... Well, they have an invested interest in curtailing that, it seems. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, they do. And what's interesting, what you'll find, you see the Chinese people, they are now reaching the middle class status for, for a big number of them. Right. Now they've reached... The, you know, before they were in poverty and there were difficulty, there were all these things. Now the middle class is looking for spiritual answers. It's incredible. At my university, I remember this Chinese person accepted Islam. Chinese people are accepting religion. And what you find is they're going back to Taoism. They're going back to Buddhism. They're going back to uh, Christianity. They, you know, Christi Nestorian Christianity, I believe. Maybe Muhammad knows about Nestorianism. Nestorian Christians actually went to China a long time ago. So the thing is, the world as a whole is becoming more religious now than it was in the 1960s. In the 1960s, you know, Time magazine had this uh, cover which says God is dead, right? Now, what do you mean God is dead? God is everywhere from a political point of view. You go to Afghanistan, you go to Latin America, you got Trump in America, well, he's gone now, but you get what I mean? Religiosity is part and parcel of human nature. It's not gonna go anywhere. Well, of course, it's not equally distributed. Certain countries are less religious and other countries where they have more people might have like faster you know growth in terms of like religious rates um i do Islam is the fastest growing everywhere but the thing that like i still am like left with is it just because even if like the majority believe in something and is predisposed predisposed to something and even if arguably it's useful that still to me is just not convincing enough to suggest that it's true um, what would I convince do... you that no no yeah, no, what no, would no you want to say something, so, yeah? so, sorry to cut you off, Mohammed. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No one is saying it's to convince you it's true. What Muhammad is saying, what I'm saying is it's data, and that data needs an explanation. And the explanation that Muhammad gave is human nature, which is linked to God. So that that's what's missing here. We're not saying that means God. He's using the data to make an argument. Okay, but I, I still having this question for you. What would convince you in particular that God exists? Um, it would have to be probably something extremely, you know, naturalistic. Like obviously, like if some if some sign in the sky said, "I'm God," like I'm real. Here's my holy book, and it just like falls from the sky and lands in my hands, or something like that. I would think either, okay, maybe I'm hallucinating, but like uh -huh. maybe there is something. Maybe there is something to this. So, and, so that's not proof because maybe you're hallucinating. Well, it's a pretty convincing one. <laughs> pretty I'll give it that. You, you would say I had a dream. I was hallucinating. I didn't really see this. In fact, you mentioning hallucinating is very, is very interesting because that's in essence what the Quran says. The Quran says in chapter fifteen, Surah Al Hijr, that, that if Allah were to make a ladder for the disbelievers and they go up and they look at heaven, they look at the creation, they would say our eyes have been dazzled to people uh, that are affected by magic. So right. even if they were to so, to see these naturalistic things, are not necessarily evidence for the existence of a of a I, creator. I hear that, and like for me though, I'm like really interested in like what those ta like to me, I can't help but hear things like that and think of them as like nation building tactics, right? Like okay, let me ask you a different question. Men. I don't, let me ask you I a different, don't see that a different question. Certain. Do you believe anything is 100% absolute or certain? Um, um, I, I don't, uh, <laughs> the thing is like, I don't, I don't function in that way. Like, so let's say that like, there's like a, I just assume, for instance, if I let go of like a pin, you know, that it will fall to the ground. I don't concern myself with, is it like 99% certain? Cause like maybe there is a magnet up, a, a super powered magnet up above me that I didn't account for, right? That, so, um, you know, I, I guess but you could say that- You've not answered my question though. Do you believe in that anything is absolutely true? 100%, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm trying to figure out what you mean. Like, I believe that some things are true or false, but I don't. Absolutely true, which means does not allow for the possibility of it being false. I don't think that, 
I don't think anything can't be falsified. Or how do you, you don't it? think I mean, anything can't be falsified? By it, by no, essence, not that. Nothing is... <laughs> not that nothing is. I, I mean, how do I explain it? Let's just say, for the sake of convenience, let's just say that I think that yeah, one hundred percent certainty is is possible. It's. I mean, no, it's not. I, it's not for hypothetical sake. I'm asking you what you believe. You know, <laughs> we're not just arguing you for the sake of hy hy hypothetical situations. I'm asking you, you, <laughs> you yourself. Do you believe something is absolutely hundred percent true? Let's just say no, because I, I find I no know. value in thinking I, that I, way. <laughs> yeah, I know the answer is no. Therefore, okay. asking asking someone to prove something by is by default is nonsensical. Because if you already hold the position that nothing is absolutely is hundred percent true, and you hold the position that you you're only ex accepting your experience that is not even true, you're ex accepting uh, ninety percent your experience and what you see based on empirical reality, then you're already limiting your scope, and you, there's no point of a religious person presenting something to you to begin with. So you already limited the scope by saying I don't think something is absolutely hundred percent true. But then, and like then you again, limited the scope. Secondly, you limited the scope. Secondly, that the evidence has to be empirical, seen by the eye, etc., or held. But I think that's just the nature of humans. I think we always like even Muslims limit the scope of their knowledge through like their religion. Like everything that we observe gets filtered through our biases. We're not we're not God, so to speak. We are limited to like our biology. We're limited to like cultural conditioning and um, whatever models and assumptions we made that are informed through like our experiences. Like, so I don't think that- You, t you talk about human nature. We already talked about human nature and God is a part of that human nature. And but still you reject that part of human nature. If you were, if you were, if you were working from a human nature perspective, you would be accepting that idea of existence of a higher power that it, it is, existing in other human beings is a part of you i nature. reject the notion that 100 percent of people are going to find it natural to believe in a god or a higher power a specific can, one particularly okay can something come from nothing for you what's your definition of nothing <laughs> absolute absolute absence of everything i don't think so okay well what is your position in the universe then where did the universe come from so my understanding is that when physicists talk about nothing uh in general what they mean is like no, not, not, not different. It's you, you, Wesley, Wesley. I'm not asking well, that's again. What I you, tend to you go to other people. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about you. Well, you yourself, or, or or your position is what they say. If nothing, if you mean nothing in the sense that there are states where like possibly matter can't form. No, then, no. I said to you the okay. absence of everything. I don't think so. I don't think that I can. I can't conceive of that concept of like okay, absolutely. So, so, so where did the universe come from? I don't know. Okay. What attributes do I require by necessity to bring a universe into existence? If I wanted to make a universe, what do I need? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not a universal creator. Okay, I, okay no problem. <laughs> would I need a, an immense amount of power and, and, and knowledge in order for me to create atoms that if you split, you got near, nuclear explosions, the whole universe is full of atoms? Do I need a level of intelligence and knowledge to have laws, gravitational systems, etc.? Do I need to be not restricted by time and space the same way that creation is restricted by time and space? The because answer I is going rise... to be disappointing. I don't know. I, I like I, I literally don't. No, I can't no, no. Tell but these things happened. are necessities. Uh, you cannot bring the universe into existence without these things. So it's not. Without... I know or I don't know. Why can't intelligence be an emergent property though? No, no. Let's leave intelligence now. Let's talk about power. Let's talk about okay. not being not being bound by time and space the way the creation is. Because you'd bring time space continuous into reality. So by essence, you'll be eternal from that perspective. You will be independent of the universe. The universe will depend on you because you brought it into existence. Okay. And you've got this immense amount of power and energy, etc., bringing the universe, bringing the universe into existence. And you have to have knowledge in order for you to have these systems, gravity, etc. Now, if you've got these characteristics, then what do we refer to that as generally as human beings? What do we call that? A creator, I guess. Uh... Okay. Okay, so we, we should then agree on the existence of a creator. But you talk about intelligence and you assume that, you know... No, I, don't, I, I, don't, I use knowledge, by the way. I'll tell you something interesting, by the way, that intelligence, even though sometimes we use that term, but uh, uh, in the attributes of Allah, you're not going to find that, that name. You're going to find the name of, uh, of knowledge. You're going to find the attribute of knowledge. Allah attributes, attributes knowledge to himself. But necessarily, the word intelligence, you're not going to find it I believe, in the names and the attributes of Allah. Yeah? Okay. So that's why I'm using a term knowledge specifically. So knowledge, 
power, uh, power and energy, the, the way that we were talking about, that being independent and eternal, bringing the, the universe into existence. Those are basic attributes that by necessity have to be there in order for you to have the universe. Well, then I, I like in the context of Islam, I'm left with like the question of like. Yeah, then we move into Islam, right? <laughs> you say the first point. But, we, with, we but with Islam, you're talking about like a God that has clearly set forth rules and I would say has goals. Um, is my understanding like um, like how do you determine that like God is what set forth these rules like what is your like yeah, to me you, it just seems got... like it would be man made like the Quran could just be man made and humans just have a predisposition to follow yeah. and learn language and like that's sort of like the but that doesn't mean that it's like from God it doesn't yeah uh, first after establishing there is something with ha possessing these attributes we look at the scripture that came or the, uh, the religious claim that has been made. We analyze it. And based on that, we make our conclusions. Right. So I'm not saying yeah. to you, therefore, believe, become a Muslim. I never said that. Right. I never mm -hmm. said that we have these attributes. We have that creator, therefore, become a Muslim. But I'm saying if that creator is there and everything mm -hmm. around us has a purpose, has a role, has a functionality, is functioning in a specific way, everything around us. Right. We're not the old ones out. But if there are many... Hmm. You bring up you bring up the idea of like function like the way that I understand function is that it's it's a I don't I'm not aware of that the reason why function is so interesting to me when I think about like religion is because it's very much a human way to look at the world in terms of like how it functions who does it serve and I just have a difficulty in this regard thinking about like 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 it it just seems you're a to me, human you have to look at things in a human way but how, how can we know if things? a god perceives things to be in that way like like you know, by God telling you, by God telling you, by it's not, God it's not, it's, you. it's not that God perceives, it's not that God perceives things in these ways. It is that God commanded you to function in that way. These are two separate things, right? Now, the po point is, as I said to you, is to look at that scripture or that evidence, because you've got many people who've made that claim throughout history. How many prophets of God have you heard of? Many, right? Many, yeah. So when you heard people claiming, okay, we established just some sort of a creator of certain attributes. We've got multiple people throughout history making a claim. Then we need to be actually testing th those claims because if those claims are correct and I die and I end up in an eternal damnation of hellfire, I can only blame myself. Right. So, so what I need to do is actually to put some effort into looking into those religions, into looking into those scriptures and then making my conclusion whether this is from God or not. But to say, okay, no, 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 I don't think, I think this is a human or this or that, and it completely denounce it and ignore it, is not a rational position to take. Like, have you looked into Islam, like read the Quran and looked at the evidences that people display to say this is from God? Not 100%, I'll say that much. Okay, not, not 100%. Excellent. So that's, that would be my advice. And, and and we'll end the discussion with you there because I think Brother Sabur is tired as well. It's late already. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm not actually uh, tired. Was, uh, yes. I, 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 I was actually very cold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, so, so Wesley, um, you know what Muhammad was saying there? Uh, I just wanted to reiterate something which he said, which is quite interesting. So he said, look, there has to be knowledge yeah. behind the universe because there's knowledge. There has to be, um, you know, immense power you split the atom you get a nuclear thing what he's saying here are things which are basically logically deductive okay. they're not inferences they're not like okay this kind of make no it's actually it has to be the case it has to be the case that there's a that there's a creator and that creator is all powerful knowledgeable and you know all these types of things now the the thing is for you how is it possible how is it possible that that creator, that God, that uh, whatever name we're going to use for the divine, mm -hmm. would create everything and then not give guidance. That, like, just think about that. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, you know, a factory being set up by a manager and then he leaves for 100 years and all the factories... But why does it need to make sense? As a human, why would, if it's a god, why would in it fact, need to make sense to you? I would, I, would, I, would, I would say there is much more on that. I would say, to put it that simply, I would say there, there is tons of reasons for us to assume that it did give guidance. So it's not as simple as just as an assumption that it didn't give us guidance. So me looking at ants how they're guided by the creator, having their own systems of prisons and dealing with one another and functioning with a queen and army. Uh -huh. Exactly, right? So when I look at this creation and the tree given oxygen, taking carbon dioxide, everything in reality is functioning in a way that is innately built within it. 
also looking at the human beings themselves and how they have any morality which shows that that creator is giving the creation something That's right. right is giving them certain senses of sense of morality that is universal with everyone also mm -hmm. the fact that as i said that there are multiple people throughout history making the claim that we are coming from the creator so i i do not just say that it's a deadbeat dad that give birth and run away only but there are every reason i look i found pictures from my dad and there i find the video of him saying no look please call me find me i'm gonna be there i'm ignoring all of these evidences and then choosing not to believe or not sorry not to even look at those evidences of those religions or people who are making the claim that they are from god so it's it's completely a ridiculous position to hold i would say mm, mm, definitely i feel like i feel like i'd have to push back a bit on the notions of um objective morality we're getting we're getting off track aren't we? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay but, but wesley wesley I, I would say one thing right i would say something and this is something that i've spoken to people about and they've actually tried it the fact is if you really want to know what the truth is you should just pray to god to tell you what the truth is and that will become manifest and clear and direct to you and so many people i know personally that they didn't believe but they asked god and they weren't even sure if god was there <laughs> when they prayed that's how merciful god is they didn't even know if they truly believed that god was there but god guided them so look me me and muhammad we can tell but you look this how you do you be. know it's not the like placebo effect like if you believe it you will believe that it's what happened like it seems to me a lot of religion relies on this like if you believe that prayer worked then you conclude that it worked because you feel that it worked but that doesn't no, necessarily so, mean so that it's that's God's let me, order. That, so that's that's kind of different to what i'm saying that you're saying okay so someone prays they get better they get better and the placebo effect they okay. feel better yeah and they yeah yeah but here i'm saying to you you're using your mind to try and come to what is the truth, what is going on in this world, which religion is true, is there a God or not. If you pray to God, God will give you that insight, give you the passion to research and look, use your mind. God in the Quran, and this is something you can't disagree with, Wesley, no one can disagree okay. with. The Quran tells you, do not follow your society, as in don't follow your peer pressure, parents, culture, this, mm -hmm. this. You can extrapolate it. Don't follow your own desire, because sometimes we do things that are not good for us. Follow your reason God tells you again and again and again Do you not think? Do you not reflect? Do you not ponder? At least we can agree that we should be using our reason To come to conclusions about life uh -huh, Right And that's what the Quran says You should read the Quran and see what God says Okay, but my experience to reason suggests That I need to think more about like why it is that there are so many like even within Islam There's no consensus about like what Islam actually is And how do you define <laughs> This is that's, not true. That's, that's not true. That's completely that's not, not true. true. No, that's not true. So, like, is the, the five pillars of Islam and six articles of faith are agreed upon by every Muslim? Yeah. Every Muslim? Are you sure? Yeah, you which, is, which is to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, to establish the prayer. Uh, to give the zakat to to pilgrimage in ramadan those uh, five and the six articles of faith to believe in allah his books his messengers his prophets the last day and destiny all muslims agree that you have to believe in these things you have to practice these these yeah. these uh, practices you're not going to find someone who says i'm a muslim but i don't i don't believe uh, i pray at all i don't believe you're not going to find these people who are actually considered muslims if someone They'll is like that they are, if some, no 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 if someone is like that <laughs> no not majority it would be a consensus that person is not muslim because these are okay. the, are the foundations so wesley to to make it simpler in the world today there's 1.8 billion muslims or 2 billion i don't know what the number is Okay. 99% of those people who claim they're Muslim, if you ask them of the five pillars or six pillars of Iman, like if you, of faith, basically ask them these things, they will they will testify. They will testify to these things. So th there isn't that much Exceptions difference. Exceptions don't make the rule. You cannot say people yeah. disagree on Islam based on, on a fringe, my even an, an accounted for minority that wouldn't agree yeah. with each other. You know, so you can't you can't do that. So Islam it is agreed upon. But just to say that the, just because there are different point of views of one thing, therefore I'm going to completely reject that thing. Do you think that's a reasonable proposition? Well, I'll I'll give you another problem with that, Wesley. Right, okay. and I know you, I know you're a very intelligent person. You're asking these very honest questions, right? You see, there are many different interpretations of a phenomena in science. Sometimes mm -hmm. these phenomena cannot be understood for an incredibly long period of time. Currently, one of the phenomena that we're finding extremely difficult to understand is quantum mechanics. So you have the many right. worlds hypothesis, you have the Copernican... Uh, Copenhagen. Sorry, no, the, 
Copenhagen School. Thank many you. worlds, yes. Yeah, many worlds, exactly. Yeah, Excellent. There are many, right? many. How many, many multiverses? Right, right, exactly. So the thing is, none of these theories can be discounted because someone says, well, there's too many, so they're all wrong. Mm -hmm. That No one says there's many different interpretations of quantum mechanics. They all can't be right, therefore they're all wrong. There is no logical flow from the, there's so many to they're all false. Uh -huh. What is clear is if there is a phenomena, there is at least one real account out there which we need to reach, right? But why so couldn't they all be false? <laughs> but okay, there has to be one true description of what's going no, on, even if we question, don't know it yet. The question is how do you know they are false? You need to oh. investigate them. If you that have already sense. not investigated them, then you cannot be making the claim what if they're all false. You need to first put the effort into investigating into these different worldviews, looking for the evidences for Islam, for other religions. And trust me, it's going to be very easy to know that Islam is the truth. You can trust me on that. You, it's not going to take you long when you talk to other religious people trying to ask them for their it's evidence. It's not about trust for me. <laughs> no, I'm saying do it. Trust me means do it. Trust me doesn't mean accept my words and become Muslim. Trust me means actually go and you will see what I'm saying you is the truth. That's what I mean by trust me, yeah? Well, see, like I, I tried communicating and following some Muslim channels for a while, which I, I think you guys would both agree that that's probably not the best way to learn about Islam because a lot of situations happen on these channels. But, yeah, read the, uh, read the but, Quran. That's what you should be doing. But the thing that... I guess that like even if I read the Quran like cover to cover and spent my entire life trying to understand every single thing about you know what is intended like what is what what the text is trying to say um, I, I still don't necessarily see how they would like I I just don't see how like you guys seem to like like. I, like I just think that th it just gets us nowhere because like at the end I just see that the difference between like somebody who like believes in one particular religion isn't is really just the core the, the core assumptions that they buy into like I think that you know like even in the context of science like th what separates a lot of scientists in certain fields and disciplines are like the core assumptions either that they they take or adopt and um, focus on and like for me having those assumptions is not particularly satisfying in regards to you know me like believing in like a god or something like that like and i just i think what you're saying is is it's yeah and completely in, in in opposition to the reality like what does a, a muslim let not just say a religious person what does a muslim benefit from islam and to say that gets you nowhere that is a complete opposite but, of what muslim gets from islam so, right so it's 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 not that you only get a satisfaction in the heart and the mind it's not that you only get this system which is perfect and in, in, in comparison to human systems, which are fallible, which keep changing, you already got a perfect system sent to you by the creator of how to, to run your life, of how to run your family, of how to run your society, of how to do everything. Literally, it is it has been set for you in the best manner possible, right? Uh, mm -hmm. oh, the fact that you if, if this is the truth, then there is an afterlife and you will get... Not nowhere, you'll get to paradise, which has an eternal, eternal pleasure, right? So, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you leave it all of the, of the picture and say it gets you nowhere. No, it gets you everywhere, literally, not just nowhere. So it gives you what no atheist will ever have. So it gives you assurance, assurance of your rational faculties, gives you a satisfaction of the, money, of the mind and the heart, it gives you objective morality. Right? It gives you, as I said to you, these, these societal uh, uh, societal laws which are perfect. It gives you a community. It, I, what does it not give you is the question to ask. But that's just the thing is that it seems to me very much a self-fulfilling prophecy is that like when I think about But now you're contradicting what you said before. Well, when I think about religions and how they spread, like I think that they seem to us, to you guys in particular, they might seem like very convincing. Like, Islam might seem very convincing to you because like you guys very much benefit from that identity and have learned to associate with that identity as a result of like sociocultural upbringing factors. I, I want to talk so, too much about so, that. So, so Wesley, look, the, the problem with that line of thinking is it could apply to anything, but it's actually known as the genetic fallacy, right? So I could read about the Big Bang in a comic right i could find the big bang very comforting 
But those two facts together does not affect the reality that the Big Bang is actually a real model. Likewise, there are atheists out there who are very upset at the idea of hellfire and very upset at the idea of there being heaven forever because they'll be bored out of their brains. And so mm -hmm. therefore they find it comforting to be an atheist. And I can turn around and say, well, you're an atheist because you've... the problem with this particular sword is it cuts all ways <laughs> and it doesn't actually lead to any real conclusions. So the, one of the things that you can try and do is actually look at this. Why would, just consider this point, why mm. would people who weren't brought up as Muslims, for example, the early Muslims were all converts. All of Arabia, they were all converts. Okay? okay. Why would people give up women, wine, wealth, status, power, materialism, everything, even their lives for the sake of something immaterial? Like, just think about it. And these were poor people. And even today, here, here in the West, we have so many people accepting Islam. You have people here who are brought up in liberal societies, taught wokeism, liberalism, feminism, humanism, Darwinism, scientism, all this stuff. And they reject it all for something that came from Arabia in the 7th century. It's like, you should ask yourself, why would people make these changes? So, for, you know, mm -hmm. th this is important for, to you in your analysis. Well, for me, I, I just, just want that one, more, survival, one more quick thing to add. Tactic. Just... Just one more quick thing to add is that you got, I think, the study in the University of Edinburgh. I'm not sure, but uh, I believe they've done a study on the how long does it take for a person to accept Islam. And they came to approximate average of seven years. That they spent six to seven years of studying Islam before they adopt Islam. It has nothing, it's just not just, it's just done basic research here and there. No, they've actually looked into this in detail. And then after doing that, those people are not Muslim, who does not benefit to whatever all of the benefits you were mentioning is not for which, them, but they still choose to accept. Which populations did they sample? Was that like the British population? Just, Was that, yeah, it's, it's, you go to the, I believe it's the University of other Edinburgh. I'll, I'll try to put it uh, if I find it, yeah? But the point is the point is what matters, right? The point is what matters. People are accepting Islam on a daily basis, right? Okay. You'll, find this, you'll find this all over. You'll find this on, my, on this small channel of mine. You'll find this on channel of other brothers on YouTube. happening on a daily basis, Okay. right? People are accepting Islam. And they are not benefiting the things that you're saying. And when you look at their reasoning for why they accept Islam, none of, the, none of them put these re the reasons that you're putting. Mm -hmm. They all That's say right. it's rational, it makes sense, there are evidences, I couldn't yeah. just ignore all of these reasons. I listen to Well, they don't have the own, extra context. Okay. So, so um, Wesley and Muhammad, I'm going to ask your yeah. permission to head off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've absolutely. Got, absolutely. I've got it's early good. work tomorrow morning. <laughs> Take care. I'll let you go, inshallah. Zakallah khair, brother Sabur, for coming Thank on. You. And for everyone listening, inshallah, if you are interested in uh, topics of science, evolution, etc., brother Sabur has a channel, it's called The Rain Delusions. If you want to go check him out, I'm sure there will be benefits there for you. Inshallah, yeah. So, Wesley, uh, I'll probably uh, let you go as well. Yeah, yeah? it's getting late. So, I, I, yeah, I hope you read, no problem. I hope you read the Quran, as I said. Do some yeah. more research. Try to read the Quran. I have nothing to lose. Trust me. you got two billion people in the world. A quarter of the population of the planet believe in this book. So, it's, I would say it's worth it to at least read <laughs> to see what, what those people believe in. Yeah. I'd Maybe. say that's at least, at least. If I was hard, not Muslim, I, I would just read is, it. <laughs> it's hard to predict, but it might be worth it in certain aspects. So, I'll give you that. Yeah. So, so, so I would, I would, I would recommend you do. And if you need a copy or anything, if you have questions, you can just email me. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, thank you for coming, Wesley. Thank you. you have a good one. No problem. Okay, brothers and sisters. Jazakumullah uh, khair, all of you. What do you think about the, the life? We didn't get that many atheists, to be honest. And honestly, I didn't think we'll get that many atheists trying to prove evolution because generally, they're just keyboard warriors. And when it comes to actually trying to... Uh, when it comes to actually try, trying to, to investigate and look into the, their beliefs, you saw what they came up with today. They don't know. You don't know the assumptions of the faith. You don't know the, the details of their beliefs. They would just try to attack one individual <laughs> because because they would leave a whole presentation for one and a half hour and pick two minutes of one person that said something and try to act as if they've dealt with the with the evolution or uh, sorry, we've dealt with the 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 the, the whole. Um, sorry, I'm just removing this link. Yeah, they will act as if they dealt with the whole presentation. So it's strange, Subhanallah. Yeah, like before leaving the stream. <laughs> it was good. 
I came two hours later. Oh, yeah, alhamdulillah. Brother Sabur, he joined a bit late, so it's good. You came on the part where he joined. I did have a basic discussion with Wesley in the beginning, trying to see uh, what he believes in. But this is always the case, trust me. Uh, the point of this stream, brother, brothers and sisters, is that we should be more on the offensive when it comes to these topics, yeah? I don't want us to be on the defensive. Don't be on the defensive as if you're trying to justify something. They need to justify to you where are these clear cut evidences that evolution happened and it is true, right? And all you need to do is just to ask. All you need to do is to ask. And you will see how they fumble. They don't have answers. They, oh, they, uh, they, don't, they don't know what to do. When you start to actually question them and their beliefs, right? So that is the main point that we get from this, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, I'm, I'm going to leave this live up, inshallah. You can watch it later if you like. The Muslim, what about doing, I don't agree that it is compatible with Islam. Anyways, that's not my position. Why would I do a stream demonstrating that? I believe those people that try to show compatibility between evolution and Islam lead a lot of people eventually to leaving Islam. Because those people who try to find their com compatibility and then the, uh, link it to the Islam, what they end up, what, or what ends up happening, what, end up, what ends up happening is that those people, okay, they say, this is true for animals. So why am I being a hypocrite, rejecting, rejecting it when it comes to humans, just because the Quran says so? If this evolutionary perspective is true, if these evidences are true, then I need to be consistent with my position. I should accept the whole thing. I should accept the whole theory. So I'm not with that position of trying to, to link the two together. And I'm, I'm clearly against it, especially that most of it is hocus pocus, as I said many times. A lot of people get triggered when I say this. <laughs> but because it is like this, why would I try to like literally bring some a bit of garbage and make it compatible with Islam? Just to appease uh, the Western society that believes in it or the people who fabricate evidence to believe in it? You need to ask your, yourself first, why would I need to try to do that to begin with? I don't know what you mean by that question, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no compatibility. Listen to Allah. Not all, not the evolutionists. They're all atheists, Satanists, blue haired demons. <laughs> Maybe a bit harsh. Yeah, subhanAllah, they, most of them are, are like are atheists. They're trying to push a specific agenda. What they're trying to do is to convince you that these things can happen randomly. All of this intricate, beautiful creation and design of Allah Azza wa Jal that we as humans can look at and see and be a sign for us to increase our belief. Allah Azza wa Jal asks you in the Quran, Those who ponder on the creation of the heavens and the earth, Oh Allah, you did not create this in vain. All oh, glory be to you. Protect us from the punishment of the fire. Allah is saying this is the, the case of the believers. They look and they ponder on the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they say, oh Allah, you did not create this in vain. How can you ponder on it if they just tell you there's a bunch of random mutation that happened? They, they are trying to attack very, the very simplistic people, the laymen, that have this close... The, the clear basic fitra when they look at something like this beautiful animals and creation of Allah, butterfly, a rainbow, they know there has to be something behind this. They're trying to attack that. The, the live Q&A are all in the uh, playlist. If you go to the channel and click playlist, you'll find the live streams there, the Q&A, all of them. And I'm not saying that everyone has to hold my position when it comes to evolution. I'm telling you my position. And I'm telling you what I think the people who believe in evolution will end up doing in the end. It's very problematic. So I got no reason for me to try to link it to the Islam to begin with. Especially with all the lies, etc.
Okay, brothers and sisters make dua for brother Andrew Tate has been diagnosed with lung cancer as reported by his friend and our Muslim Australian brother. Allahumma shifa. May Allah Azza wa Jal give him shifa and ease his pain, inshallah. Uh, I'm not sure how, how correct is this news, but if it is true, then may Allah Azza wa Jal give him shifa and give him a quick release as well. Okay, okay, brothers and sisters, inshallah, I'll let you go. It's getting a bit late here, and uh, we'll see you, inshallah, in the next stream. Uh, inshallah, you enjoyed the stream. Inshallah, there was benefit in it, and uh, may Allah Azza Jal accept from us uh, anything I said correct is from Allah, and anything I said wrong is from me and the Shaytan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, shadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.